All right. Only a minute late. This worked remarkably well. I forget how long it takes me to get the dogs ready in the morning. My wife is flying back from Japan, so <laughs> normally I just get up and walk up here, and today I had to get them rocking and rolling, and that took me a little bit longer than I expected. Anyway, we are going to be using ZBrush 2020 this morning. Uh, I think everything's okay for me to do that. I didn't hear otherwise, so we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to do this, I think. Um, I'm just going to go through the the basics really quickly, and then we'll kind of maybe get into some funner stuff. And by funner, I mean I haven't really tested it yet, but it should be. I have some demo projects we can try to kind of explain uh, some of the functionality a little bit better. Uh, you may have noticed on my YouTube channel, uh, and I'll be referring back to this when we start going through some of the new feature sets here. Uh, so like the ZBrush 2020 new features time lapse. If you go ahead and click this. Uh, you can kind of watch through this and I've got some things called out that we use. Some of it's just ZBrush functionality that we can also talk about. Uh, and then some of it's also ZBrush 2020 related. So we might go through this and talk a little bit about the making of um, this this guy. This little uh, patchy, patchy dude. So we can give that a shot. So anyway, uh, okay, we're in ZBrush 2020 right now, and I'm going to go ahead and load up. We'll go, you know, when you want to start with something, uh, you can grab a primitive out of this little tool palette here. You can grab any of these primitives and set that up. Uh, you can grab a PolyMesh 3D, which is just a star, but it is polygon. So if you have, if you grab, ever grab a primitive, you're going to see you're going to be in an initialized state. Let me drop this down. Hold on just a second. There we go. You can drop uh, this primitive... Uh, down here and you go to initialize and then you can say, you know what, how many divides do you want and how many horizontal and vertical divides if you want to put an inner radius in there and then when you're ready to sculpt on it then you can go up here to make PolyMesh 3D and then now you've got a uh, something to sculpt on. PolyMesh 3D is always a PolyMesh 3D or you can get the, hit the comma key and you can go up here to like the projects, the tools and you can just grab something out of here. Oh, you know what, I need to copy some I need, I need to copy some tools into there. Uh, uh, but if you wanted to start with a project, another thing they've updated is uh, this was not necessarily updated. Hey, thanks for showing up. Um, they updated this load tools from project in ZBrush 2018 or 2019, maybe. Uh, but you can now load tools from project. And if I go over here, so we're going to be in, uh, let me drop this down here real quick. ZBrush data. So when you're in, uh, your ZBrush folder, so C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, and whatever version of ZBrush you're on, you can go in here to Z Projects, and uh, so this is basically whatever's in your light box is going to be in this folder. So in like the tools, the brushes, the textures are all in your Pixel Logic ZBrush version, Z Projects, and then uh, in here. And then so if you do load tools from project, you can go down here and you can say like the um, demo anime head. You can double click that. And that way you don't have to open up a project which is going to overwrite your entire ZBrush uh, working. Um, you know, all your all your tools will be updated, all your document settings will be updated, all that stuff. This will just load in the tools from that Z project. So um, that can be a useful way to load some things in if you don't want to update that project. So uh, I've got an object in here and the first thing you might notice is a couple things. Uh, number one, you've got a cam view up here and you're going to see as I turn this head, uh, this little cam view up here is going to turn. We also have a thumbnail view. Um, let's talk about the cam view first. So if you click and drag on the cam view, you can actually just move the object itself. And then also if you click on like this little red arrow there, the green arrow there, the blue arrow there, uh, it'll go to those views. And if you touch them twice, so if I want to go to the bottom, just touch that again and it'll go to the bottom. So that way you can go ahead and just have that available to you. Um, it's the settings for that is going to be under preferences. Live from Zimbabwe, wow. Whew, I need to warm my hands up. It's colder in Texas than I'm used to. So again, I had to take the dogs out this morning and um, trying to wake up, take the dogs out, get the dogs ready, be frozen in Texas, and then uh, start live streaming. So underneath preferences, uh, we got a cam view in here. So we got a cam view section. Uh, you can turn it on or off. So if you don't want to see it, you can just turn it off and then you're back to uh, old school ZBrushing. Uh, you can turn that cam view on. You can change the size. So you can make it very small. You can make it very large. Uh, we'll go ahead and set that back at 128. Um, you're also going to see this next, so you can actually cycle through a couple of default cam views that it has available for you. So here's 
uh, I forget his name, but he's one of the projects. Remember, we were talking about the you got the comma key go over here to project, and you got I think demo projects in here. Uh, there he is, uh, earthquake. You can double click him and you can check him out. Uh, but if you want to make your own, let's go out of edit mode. Let's hit Control N to clear our canvas, and we'll say always switch. Control N. Um, let's go back into our comma key here. We're going to go into tool and we're going to double click this uh, Ryan King's line anatomy model. Give it a minute and then hit the comma key to get rid of that light box. Drag this out, go into edit mode. And under sub tool here, I'm just going to go into solo and it's going to be down here. I don't think I'm in the way of that. I moved my camera out of the way. Yeah, you can see that right behind me. Um, <clears throat> Oh, that's another thing too. Uh, I don't know if I'll get into it in this live stream, but uh, you can set up a custom interface if you want to kind of do that. I can, I'll point you to, a, I mean, obviously you can go to the Z Classroom and stuff, but since I know where this stuff is off the top of my head, um, if you go to my playlist section, there is a uh, Intro to ZBrush, ZBrush for Ideation, and in here, this will walk you through it. I think it's like 50 something videos in here of that kind of ZBrush basics. And this will take you, uh, some of the stuff will take you through like, I believe, yeah, custom interface and menus and stuff like that. So you can set that up and this will kind of get you rocking and rolling. Um, not new ZBrush 2020 stuff. Uh, you're gonna see in here, if you wanna go through like uh, ZBrush 2019, what's, two, what's new, ZBrush 2018, what's new, ZBrush 4R8, what's new. Uh, it's all in there. Also on my R station page, uh, all the what's new stuff is in here, and then any kind of ZBrush, marvelous ZBrush quick start and stuff is all on there. Uh, we'll be getting to that. Uh, I'll definitely make a playlist for you guys. This is going to be, <laughs> um, this is going to be live. So at number one, I'm not real good at all the new features, or let's say all of it. Let's say I'm not good at any of them. And then also, um, the, the power of editing is not going to be on my side. So when I do a, a video series, uh, you could be thinking, wow, Mike really knows this this section really well. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Um, a lot of times, that's just me editing out the parts where I look like a total moron, and I'm not going to be able to do that today. So hopefully, uh, we'll be able to at least get to the new features, and I won't look too stupid. But bear with me if I get in a tight spot. So hey, Kay, thanks for showing up. Uh, let me grab this skull out of here. So I'm gonna, again, hold down control shift, go in here to select lasso, and I just grabbed little pieces of that skull that I want. I'm gonna do control shift A, which is visibility, tool visibility, grow all, and then uh, geometry, modify, topology, delete hidden. Uh, this is a custom menu that I have. Again, the custom menu, I just click that link that I sent you, and that'll take you through that new stuff. Or not that new stuff, but the ability to make a custom menu. Now, I wanna make a cam view of this skull. So how am I gonna do that? Uh, if I wanna clear out the rest of these subtools, I don't need a bunch of muscles and stuff in here. So I'm gonna go to delete other. And the first thing I wanna do is put this right at the center of ZBrush world space. Uh, luckily, there's a really easy way to do that. If I turn on my floor plane, um, it's going to snap uh, to the bottom of this. But if I go in here to the draw menu and we go down here to elevation, of zero, you're gonna see the actual world is right down here. Uh, when you set it to negative one, that's gonna that snaps it to the bottom of your uh, visible or the subtools that you have, even if they're not visible. Uh, the cool thing about that is when you do your BPR render, that's what's gonna catch that shadow. Um, so it's useful, uh, but it's it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So what we're gonna do is go down here to deformation unify, and then now that's basically going to put it right at world zero zero zero. And if we go ahead and append like a cube here, and if you append a poly, a ZBrush primitive, it's gonna go ahead and make it a poly mesh for you so you don't have to click that button. Uh, it's going to make that bounding box fit right inside of a ZBrush primitive cube. So that's helpful. So after saying all that, um, now we wanna make a cam view. Now, any subtools you have visible, like say if you had, well, let's do this again. Uh, we appended a cube and then we take this cube and we can like shrink it down and scoot it over here. Um, so if these are visible on your uh, canvas or in your working area here, uh, it's going to capture it into your cam view when you capture it. So if you don't want to see it, get rid of it. In fact, we can just go ahead and delete that. Um, also, if your floor is turned on or if your perspective is turned on, uh, it's going to capture that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll keep perspective off and I'll go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and turn that floor off. So I want to capture this cam view here. So I'm going to go back 
over here. And if you don't know about this, you can double click this little divider arrow here, and that'll be um, underneath, that'll kind of open up this little docking station over here. And then you can drag any menu in here. Right now we have preferences, just take that little white dot and drag it right over there. Uh, so we have cam view, and we're gonna make our own cam view. So we can just go ahead and say make cam view. Do -do -do -do. There we go. And now we have a new camera view up there that is a skull. Um, now, that doesn't mean it's going to save necessarily. What you have to do is you have to go over here to this brush texture, and you're going to see it's uh, 18 by 1824 by 1280. Uh, so you can click on this texture and you go to export. And you're going to want to throw that into, um, so let's see, program files, pixel logic. I go to Z projects, and then we're going to go down here to our cam view. Z, oh, Z startup, cam view. You see there's cam view one, two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop because we can we can have a little bit of fun in there. Because this is uh, this is kind of interesting. So all it is is just a PSD file that you can go and you can edit it however you'd like. Um, but also, uh, what you can do is you can just go in here to export image. Let's go ahead and talk about that first before we go ahead and get fancy in Photoshop. So uh, we said, let's make sure back on track here. So we're going to say texture. We have the texture selected in here. You can also go up here to texture and then with that texture selected, go to export. And we're going to go to our ZBrush version. C program files, pixel like ZBrush version, Z startup, cam view. And we're just going to say cam view five. So now that we've saved it in here, now when we go to next, we can go next, 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 next. And then number five will be the one you just made. Um, and that's all you need to do. Now, uh, let's, let's also do another thing. Uh, you're going to notice in one of these, or a couple of these actually, you can have this functionality. So when you go through and you click, uh, you have the ability to kind of, you know, go front, back, bottom, top, left, right. If we go to ours that we made, you might be thinking, well, is it just like, is there a button in there that we can click? No. How that's driven, and it's kind of neat, is anything that is pure red anywhere in the cam view is going to have that functionality. Anything that's pure green is going to do uh, top, bottom, and then front, back is going to be pure blue. So knowing that, let's go out of edit mode. Let's go ahead and grab a, uh, let's grab a cone. Go in edit mode. And then uh, let's go ahead and say make poly mesh 3D. We'll go back to our skull here, go to subtool, append, and we'll just go ahead and append that poly 3D cone. Now, we could have skipped all of that by just appending a primitive cone. It would have done the same thing like we talked about earlier. But if you wanted to initialize this cone, that would be how you would go about it. So uh, let's go ahead and take this cone out here, and we're going to go ahead and reset up kind of, kind of this setup. Now, it doesn't have to be that. You can make it arrows. You can make it uh, hands if you want to do like BI brush insert. Uh, I am in body parts and do, uh, you know, make a hand that has a finger pointing. You could do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this for now. I'll hit W, control, drag off a copy. And if you want to drag on a straight line, just hold down control and just grab that blue line there and then hold down shift. And then um, let's go ahead and turn on our poly frame here. I'm going to go to poly groups, auto groups, which is going to be down here in your poly groups menu. And then we'll control tap this one here. Hold down Alt and reset this. Control drag out another copy, and then we'll just hold down Shift and just snap it that direction. So now we have our arrows in here. So now we need to color them. So let's go over here to our color menu. And again, we need pure red, green, and blue. So we're going to go over here. If we just move this over to the red area, you're going to see it's actually 24900. So we need to make that 25500. And then we're going to go to Color, Fill Object. And then uh, with this blue one, hold down Control Shift and isolate that one. Actually, let's do another polygroups, auto groups. So when you hold down Control Shift, and let's switch back to select rectangle. We can just grab this one here, and we'll say blue, 25500, color, fill object. And then this bottom one here is going to be green, 25500, color, fill object. And there we go. Now, if I capture this cam view, it actually is going to capture this material. Uh, so we need to have this subtool assigned a uh, flat color. Now, you can't assign a flat color just because uh, that's how you use, if you had a material assigned to these vertices, vertex uh, points in your object here, you're going to, um, you would clear out 
the material properties by going into your flat color here. But what we can do is we can take this uh, model here and oh, this is another thing I need to need to tell you guys about. If we go in here to our cam view and we go to the one we just made, you see, oh, it looks great. However, if we go into document, uh, take this background button and kind of just click in this lighter area, you're going to see, oh, we have um, we have that background color built in. So like many things in ZBrush, if you make it pure black, like where it got a little dark underneath these eyeballs here, it'll go ahead and make it transparent. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back here to document, back, let's pick that gray. So we can fix that as well and have these built in and have them be clickable. So how we're going to do that is, number one, let's go ahead and we can play around with these materials a little bit so our eyeballs don't go to pure black. One way we can do that is we can go over here to render and underneath render shadows, um, you can actually just go turn them off. So if you go in here to render properties, you can turn off uh, shadows and that'll automatically lighten these up. You can also go into the material properties here. I'm trying to remember is it intensity A, mm, one of these depth A, you can dial depth A back a little bit and that'll kind of lighten up these dark areas. You can also go into here, just grab like a basic material and uh, we can crank up this ambient. Uh, the diffuse we can keep down a little bit, but that ambient, we as we crank it up, you're gonna see this goes from pure black to kind of a just a dark gray. So that's kind of what we're looking for, just to make sure um, none of our skull pieces are gonna be transparent. Now, if we want to make our background transparent, that's as simple as going here to document, grabbing off this back and clicking and dragging and just putting black. So uh, now we have this as a white color. And of course you can color this however you'd like. It can have poly paint or it can be whatever material you'd like. Let's go ahead and say we got our, let's grab our standard brush here. Standard brush B. So if you will hit B and then S and then T, that'll grab your standard brush or you can assign hotkeys. So that's also in that link I sent out earlier. Um, just go through here and you can just assign hotkeys to anything. So my standard brush is uh, selected here and we have MRGB selected and we're gonna go over here to back here to color. And then when we fill object, it's gonna fill the material uh, and the color. So let's select white color fill object. And then for our cones here, we already have, uh, we've already filled these with colors. We already had, and this turns the colorize on and off here. So we already have poly paint assigned to these things. And now when we go over here, select flat color, um, that'll just have these inherit that flat color. In fact, any material you go over here, it'll inherit that material, but now we can just do flat color. Okay, so having said all of that, we have a black background. We have not so black in our object. We have some clickable things out here. Now we're gonna go over here to our camera view. So that's gonna be back under preferences. And we'll say make cam view. Oh wait, uh, that's actually gonna capture <laughs> this like that. Now that, that'll actually work. You can still go through and you can click these like whenever it's blue, you can still go click them. Uh, but I skipped a step here. So let's go ahead and do append that cube 3D. So when we, uh, if we click on this, uh, these cones here, if we go into transparency mode down here, you're gonna see um, we have our skull and this is the bounding box that our skull fits in perfectly uh, because we did unify. So you can actually go in here to your cones and you can say, uh, let's drag these in here a little bit. And then there we go. So now uh, I'm ready to go ahead and capture these on my documents. What I'm going to do is instead of, uh, there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can go out of edit mode or I can hit shift S on my keyboard. When I do shift S, that just say, saves a snapshot um, onto my document. So you can use this as like a stamp that's going, you're, it's gonna capture the skull and this is gonna be a stamp just sitting there uh, behind the skull. So let's hit control N. Let's turn that cube back on. Let's go into transparency mode. I'm just gonna make sure it's inside that bounding box in that corner. And then we'll turn our skull back on. So that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna take this cone right here. I'm gonna turn off my skull. I'm going to hit Shift S and I'm gonna turn my skull on, turn that cone off. So now we just have a stamp of those cones and then we have our skull sitting here. And now we can say, make cam view. Those cones will sit there. And now when we go into our texture, you're gonna see we have a bunch of clickable cones in there. So now what we can do is we can go back here to export and we'll say cam view six. Hit control in to clear our canvas here. And then we'll go back here to our document. We'll change our background to like our normal hot pink or gray. 
And then now when we go in here to next, it's going to cycle through here. So we'll have our skull and then we'll have our new skull that's transparent and has these little clickable arrows. Um, alternatively, you can go in here to Photoshop. Make sure I can, you can see all this. Mm, not quite. Eh, oh. uh, there we go. So in Photoshop, we'll go ahead and uh, open these up here. So again, we're going to go to our ZBrush, your ZBrush version, and we're going to go in here to our Z Startup, Cam View, and then Cam View 5. Let's open up 5 and 6. So Cam View 5 is our one without the arrows, and our Cam View 6 is the one that's transparent with the arrows. Now, if you wanted to just update either one of these or capture this one with transparency and put your own arrows in later, you can definitely do that. Um, easy way to do that. You can kind of see it's you can kind of see it's already divided up. If you can't see that, or if you did make it transparent, what you can do is you can go in here to your. Um, let me see. I've got this in my notes here. Uh, view new guide layout. So view new guide layout, and then you can say, okay, I don't want any gutter. So let's go ahead and you can just delete that. And then we do want eight across, and then in rows we do want five down zero gutter. There we go. And now it's going to divide it up into those perfect sections and now you know where your bounding boxes are. So at this point, uh, you can go through here, you can, if you had these arrows here, you can hit like W and let's say control shift or control copy, control paste. So you can put these, uh, you can go through and you can like duplicate them across and merge them down and then duplicate them this way, merge them. Uh, so you can very quickly just add new uh, arrows in here. But uh, alternatively, you can just go through here and you can draw whatever you want. As long as it's pure, pure red, pure green, and pure blue, um, you can go through here and make it whatever you want. And it'll go ahead and uh, be clickable for you. So have a little bit of fun with that. Okay. Uh, how do you do silhouette cam? We're getting there in just a second. Hey, Yara, thanks for showing up. Uh, going to do a new c series for ZBrush 2020. Yeah, of course. Um, we're doing this now. Just uh, It's going to take me a bit to do that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, no no skull preset, but at least you know how easy it is to make your own now. And then, of course, you can get even fancier. You can have the jawbone in there. You can color it up. All sorts of cool stuff you can do. Uh, oh, deep shadows. That's a good point. Uh, so when you go in here to your render settings, you do have a your render, so here's the BPR shadow settings, you also have real time uh, the preview shadows. Um, so if we do have shadows turned on, um, which is right here, and then you turn deep shadows off, you're going to see it's going to kind of gray those uh, shadows out as well. Thank you. Um, Dodruku. Is there a way in the new thumbnail menu to make a grayscale height of the selected model or all models instead of a black contour? Um, grayscale, I'm not sure about, uh, but you can you can ch change these settings. Uh, freeze view for only the Z top view, which will only react to the zoom. So if you have, oh, okay. So if you're looking at it from the top view, um, as long as you have, uh, you can use the right click menu and you can kind of snap it here. Um, but yeah, if you if you needed to have it zoom in from a particular point. That wouldn't be like from your cursor or anything. That might be a little difficult. Um, okay, so we've talked about the cam view. It's very fun. It's very cool. And then now we have this uh, thumbnail view up here. Now this one, if you watch, like we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> let me scooch back out of here. This uh, time lapse video here, uh, I I didn't think I was going to be using this as much, but honestly, while I'm while I'm working on this particular piece. My eyeballs are up in here this whole time, even when we get into when I was making this um, kind of this weird lamp post that's behind him. I was trying to figure out like, okay, I made it out of Z-Spheres. You can see it through right here, especially. It's like, okay, I recreated this in Z-Spheres just to have a little bit more control. And then as I was kind of working on this, my eyeballs were up here the entire time. I was like, well, what's going to be the best read? Do I cut across? Do I cut her down? Do I swoop down around here? Like, what's not going to interfere uh, and it, it's all dependent on your camera angle as well, uh, but boy, this this actually came in handy quite a bit. I was surprised how much I ended up using that. 
but uh, let's go ahead and load up. Uh, let's load up a possibly. Um, I've got some files here that I think we can check out. Let's go to Apache. You can go ahead and load them up. And we'll talk about the making of this guy as well. And I'm going to turn our texture off here. And let's go ahead and <clears throat> let's turn off transparency. Uh, so with transparency on, you can go through and you can uh, kind of click on any of these and you can actually just see what's uh, what this one is and it's kind of soloed out. You can also do that just with solo. You can just go through here and then whatever you have selected, um, you'll see your the preview of that in solo mode. Now the cool thing about having transparency turned on is you can just click on that uh, in your viewport and then see it up here and you don't have to have everything hidden so you can kind of just have that selected and then it'll show up. Uh, we turn transparency off and everything's going to show up. Now anything you don't have in here like oh, I don't want to see my lamp uh, you just go through here and you can I'm going to alt tap through here and you can just turn those off and or if you know, and here's a better one if you know that that's going to have glass in it and you're going to be able to see through it just go turn it off and now you can see that silhouette so that might make a little bit more sense. Um, so yeah, camera view. You can go up here and you can click and drag on it and you're going to see it's going to, it doesn't get, it's still alias, but it's um, basically what it's doing is a magnification. So just like when we were talking about our cam view, that's going to be under your preferences here. And instead of cam view, we're going to go to our uh, thumbnail. Now under thumbnail here, you can turn it on or off and you can magnify it by clicking and dragging in here and magnifying it or you can go in here and you can use a slider. Um, now the size is what's going to contain this quality so if you go to magnify one and then increase the size you're going to see the quality is pretty sweet and then of course you can uh, can you magnify from here? Yeah you can continue to magnify. Uh, if, if you like this thing you can say export thumbnail and you can export it as a uh, PSD JPEG bitmap TIFF all that good stuff so very easy to kind of capture your silhouette of your object based on the rotation. So if you want to just really quickly grab a silhouette, you don't have to make your background wide and go in there and temporarily, you know, turn off colorize and all that stuff. You can just very quickly go through here and uh, grab a silhouette, export it, and you're good to go. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that magnify down and we'll take this back to 128. Uh, again, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. You can also turn off silhouette. So now instead of a silhouette, you have your actual object here. And if we hold down shift and turn on this little colorize here, you're going to see it does have polypane information. So it's just basically a little miniature view of your scene. Um, if you do have silhouette turned on and your background set to white, it's automatically going to choose black. However, if you click on the background and you drag anywhere in your scene, like say you wanted a red background, it's going to take the complementary color and plug that into your silhouette value. Uh, unless, of course, you have silhouette off and then, it, then you just have a uh, red version of this. So uh, so again, go through here and you can choose uh, your favorite sports team and that can be your silhouette. Or you can just choose, and in fact if you want to invert it, you can choose white uh, or you can choose black. Uh, pure black is going to make it transparent. So that way uh, if you wanted to like, I don't know, save out some transparency or if you just want to see it with the background color that you have, then that's totally legit. However, if you wanted to do a little bit uh, lighter, let's uh, take our foreground color here. And so here's pure black. I'm going to pull this up just a tiny bit and then we'll just drag off of here and go to a very dark gray. And now you're going to see we have an inverted silhouette. So let's go ahead and switch back to white. Uh, export thumbnail size, thumbnail silhouette, and that's thumbnail. Uh, now that you have Zebra 2020, do you uninstall your previous versions? Uh, you, uh, I usually do. I certainly deactivate them so you have free up your license, I think. But um, I suppose you can keep them around. I usually, I usually feel safe enough to where I can just get rid of my old ZBrush versions. Now, one thing I would say is if you were using like a ZBrush 4R7, ZBrush 4R8, ZBrush 2018, 2019, 2020, every time a new version comes out, I rebuild my entire... Um, custom menus and stuff like that um, every time there's a new version just to keep me just to make sure let's go ahead and turn that floor plane off just to make sure I'm compatible uh, there's no weird issues with my menus or anything like that so basically what I'll do is I'll uh, take these menus here and then I'll do a print screen and I'll just grab green shot and I'll just say okay you open an image editor and then I can go through here I'll just have this kind of sitting out to the side 
And then let's go through and then just recreate these menus real quick. Uh, I know where these things are, so it, just, it takes me all of five minutes. Once you've done that, and you make remake your custom menu here, you can go to Preferences, Config, Store Config. And if you guys missed it, because this is one of the first things we went over, um, custom menus and stuff, and even just kind of an intro to ZBrush, you can check out there. Uh, oh, okay, I'm getting a little bit behind. I apologize in advance if I miss something. Um, cool. Yes, uh, that sounds right. Have you found any good uses for the hatch brushes? If you're doing like uh, comic style, uh, I used to, I mean, I've never really used it for production purposes, but um, you could use hatch brushes, I think, for like giving kind of a clay appearance if you're sculpting with them or if you want to just kind of do stylized rendering. Uh, speaking of stylized rendering, uh, I went through Pablo Munoz Gomez's ZBrush, um, ZBrushGuides.com and we did a stylized, let me see, playlist. We did kind of a stylized rendering thing. Now, ZBrush 2019, what's new? If you check this one out, there's a whole bunch of stylized rendering you can do uh, with VPR filters. In fact, if we kind of click on that, you can kind of see all the, here's like a cool, that, that mech uh, from my, so if you went to my ZBrush 2018, uh, ZBrush Summit presentation. You can you can watch that here, certain affinity presentation. And you can talk and just let me blather on about process and stuff. There I am, and in there. Oops, not there. That mech that we use for that cinematic. If you click on here, uh, you can see you can get a very cool stylized inky kind of wash render. Uh, if you kind of click down here, so you can kind of do this type of stuff with a BPR filter. So there's that. Uh, in addition to that. If you go to mm -hmm, where it is, I'm already lost. Oh, there it is. Uh, Super Sky Stylized Rendering. You can click on this, and uh, you can also follow along with. Uh, ZBrushGuides.com uh, PDF, and then we kind of go through in video form and talk about these are more real time solutions for getting like a comic book render. So you can use those hatch brushes, I assume. I don't know if I've ever actually used them uh, to maybe get some inky ink stuff going on here. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm not being able to open in ZBrush Project Frost in the Lightbox without overwriting whatever it really holds me back. I understand you can only add in OpenZ tools. It's really hard to keep things organized. Uh, so we went over this earlier too. You can also alternatively load tools from Project and then as long as you know where they are, if you are using Lightbox, um, you probably have shortcuts to this. You can go in here, ZBrush, we're in you know, this one. So we can go in here to our Z Projects folder. And in your Z Projects folder, if you have hot or shortcuts to other areas, you can take them there too. Um, geez, why is my brain not working? I know why my brain's not working. So uh, my dog got cold. One of my dogs got cold at three o'clock in the morning, and she planted herself right next to me um, to steal all my body heat. So. That's when I woke up. Uh, you go in here to Z projects and any of these Z projects that would normally overwrite, like all of this stuff would disappear if I loaded up a Z project. If you go to load tools from project, then again, like we were doing earlier, uh, load up that demo anime head and now you just have a Z tool in there and it doesn't really affect anything else. So give that a shot. Uh, and then once you have a menu item, you can assign a keyboard shortcut for like any other item. Yes, so for example, my path custom, if I that's not going to do it. Uh, most things, if you hover over it, like, okay, the standard brush is set to Alt-S. Uh, my path custom there is set to Alt-A, so that's like a hot um, hot key, not hot key, um, marking menu. In Maya, you can just have that pop up, and you can have multiple menus assigned on multiple hotkeys, and then no matter where your brush is, you can go through and you can just kind of use that. Can you use your old interfaces and menus? Yes, you can, but I would suggest every new version of ZBrush rebuilding them from scratch. Just uh, make sure it's compatible. Um, why is it a problem and they have to be rebuilt each time they change ZBrush? Because they're changing ZBrush. So anything in here that got changed, you're running the risk of something that changed and it's maybe some sort of incompatibility with old buttons and old functionality. Uh, one good example of that is this right here, this little paint with alpha. This won't show up. In fact, we're going to get to that in a bit. Um, but uh, I need to get... Oh, I should have put some pictures in here. That would have really helped me. Um, so under the draw palette, 
there is uh, this little A, paint with alpha button. Uh, so that's going to be in your new interface. However, if you were loaded up your old interface and stuff, there's a chance that this wouldn't show up at all. So just in case, that's where that is. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, yes. Uh, also, speaking of importing and exporting, now when you go to import or export, uh, instead of going through the old school method, which is like Z plugin, uh, FBX import export, you can just export in here and you can just drop this down and you can say, I want to export an FBX. And then you can export an FBX, it'll pop up a menu options, and then you can just export everything uh, as an FBX. So when you do that, that's going to be, uh, you can export Maya files, FBX, OBJs, STLs, all that stuff. Uh, it looks like these are still there, so if you did want to go to like the 3D Print Hub and do your import and exporting or your FBX import export, it's still there. Um, I, that may or might not be true for final release, but uh, ex just go to the export page and you should be good to go. Um, Concept phone sculpt and ZBrush, your mesh every top of my cleanup, except since texturing series, complete workflow I do on a daily basis. Um, I kind of have that. Uh, the reptile creature series is probably the closest thing I have, but that's pretty dated. Uh, if I ever get time, I would love to do that. If I could just do that full time, uh, I would be in heaven. But unfortunately, um, you know, those spreadsheets are not going to write themselves. Those PowerPoints are not going to make themselves. So somebody's got to do it. So that's what I do. Uh, let's keep moving down my list here. So you can see, here's my notes. I'm just going to kind of go through these really quickly. Not <laughs> really quickly. Here we are uh, 40 minutes in. So uh, you can tell that was a lie. So let's go out of edit mode here. And we'll go ahead and grab, uh, let's grab a cylinder 3D, go into edit mode, uh, make poly mesh 3D so we can sculpt on it. And then we'll hit control D a bunch of times so we can go through here and we can start sculpting. Um, let's go ahead and crank that Z intensity up just a bit. And then under my stroke settings here, we have lazy mouse turned on. You can tap L to turn that on and off. You can also crank up that radius so you can get a nice smooth stroke, or you can tap L to turn it off and that'll get rid of lazy radius altogether. Um, so let's talk about the extractor brush. I go through here and I can kind of just go through and uh, start making uh, divots and bumps to my object here. Another interesting thing you might find useful is if you go through here and you sculpt something and then you do shift one that's repeat relative so now you can go through here and you can actually just start repeating a shape over and over again uh, or you can do the alternative you can hold down alt and then you can do shift one and you kind of start capturing these things like so uh, now if i wanted to grab this for use um, to kind of continue this stroke on and i didn't want to i wanted to like put this into a brush, I can go into BX, you're going to see there's extractor, extractor dot, extractor drag rect. Uh, so EXT is extractor brush. And how this thing works is if you make your brush size uh, big enough to kind of capture everything, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off a line cursor to surface. That's under preferences, edit, uh, 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 a line cursor to surface somewhere. There it is. So uh, you can turn that off. So the reason I turn it off is why if I have that on and I'm trying to judge distances and it's flip flopping everywhere, I don't mind it for like, you know, sculpting purposes or for, certainly for Z modeler. But when I'm trying to like get sizes, I like to just go ahead and turn that off. So uh, we have this here. So I'm going to hit G. Now what that's going to do in my alpha menu, you're going to see there is a from brush button now. Um, so that's the default for that. You can see right here is G for the hotkey and then alpha width is going to be details. We'll get to that in a second. But Long story short, hit G to turn this into a blue cursor, and then you just click and drag, and it's going to go through and go, okay, I got gotcha. you. And now I just have a alpha that I can go through, and then I can just go through and just keep stamping uh, with that texture that I just picked up. Now, this does have a history function. So if I go through here, and it's like, okay, I have a standard brush, and I start putting in uh, these little dots here. So we're going to do uh, again, shift one to repeat relative. I want to fill these up with pods. And then I'll go back to BXT and make our brush size big enough to capture everything. And then again, hit G. And then one more time, we're going to scroll on through here. And then now we can pick up these objects. You can go through here. Um, you can also, like the other brushes we talked about, BX drag dot. So you can hit G and that'll just drag um, 
across that and then when you go to apply this alpha it'll be a drag dot stroke and then the drag rect bxr this is the one where you click and drag from the middle it'll go ahead and just capture all this I'll capture alpha and then this will be a drag rec stroke. Now if you don't want it to fade off on the corners that's going to be a function of this focal shift. You can just drag that back out and that'll capture it more. Uh, you might have to play a little bit with that mid value maybe um, to get that to play a little bit nicer. Also um, you might want to capture it on a plane. If you're doing something very regular like this you're not doing it on like a Frankenstein head which we'll get to later um, it might give you a little bit of a cleaner drag rec capture if you're not getting it from a bended, little bendy surface. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. Uh, anyway, let's go back to BXT. And so we're capturing these things. However, we also do have history through here. So it's like, you know what? I made those dots. Uh, so I have a version, if you go through here, it's like, okay, I have a version that is um, just the divots. And then I have a version that is just uh, the divots and the bumps, but what if I want just the bumps? So you can go through here and you can go back through your history and you can hold down control and uh, tap that one and that's going to store that in history. So anything past that history point, uh, it's going to completely disregard. So now we can go back to BXT and then make our brush size big enough to get all those dots, hit uh, G and then just go through here and capture. And then now we just get dots. So where this might make a little bit more sense so we're going through here and we're sculpting and we're sculpting and we're smoothing and we're kind of doing a bunch of stuff. And then, oh yeah, it's like, you know what? I want to make some uh, dots I want to capture. And then, oh, you know, and then I also go in like a, you know, a J pattern. It doesn't really matter what direction these things are going in. And if it's like, you know what? I want a, just a nice clean capture of this. I want to disregard uh, all that lumpy sculpting I did earlier. That's when you just go back through here and say control tap and then go back to the beginning here and then BXT and then like I said before we want to make sure go to the widest point to make sure you can capture all of it and then you can hit uh, G and then just drag right along it'll follow that and it'll go ahead and strip it out for you so now you completely disregarded the underlying sculpting and then you can go through here and just grab that texture detail that you wanted and now you've got your reptilian uh, crusty anime head uh, actually, yeah, let's do that. If you go to you know what that actually might be in give me a second. I don't remember if I captured it in here. You know what? Um, eyebrows in particular, if you go to... Oh, you might have to dig for this one. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, just search for hair, and that'll take you through a bunch of it. I also went through and did that on my YouTube. This is my. This is what. This is where this video is going to end up. Uh, this is the Pavlovich workshop. So you can go through here, and if you go way back in time, I go through a bunch of hair creation techniques. Um, somewhere in this area, <laughs> maybe this one. Let me see. Yeah, so this one, I think we talk a little bit about a couple eyebrow techniques and hair techniques and stuff like that. Um, yeah, perfect. There we go. So you can, I don't know, you can check this one out. Um, cool. So this is just grabbing sculpting information. So you can actually do it with um, poly painting and coloring and stuff like that. Um, Let's talk about, well, let's talk about that. Let's grab, <laughs> so that's the basic of the extractor brush. And uh, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a, we are gonna have a little bit of fun, but let's go ahead just for instructional purposes, just really quickly. I keep saying really quickly and I keep not being real quick about it. So we're gonna go over here to color, fill object, and then we've got our standard brush selected. So we're gonna turn on um, RGB and we're gonna go through here and we're going to paint uh, while we sculpt here. So again, uh, RGB Z add is also turned on. RGB is up to 100. So we can go through here and we can paint. Let's do bright green. Paint green on here. 
and then uh, if we want to go through here, VXT, and then as long as RGB is turned on with your extractor brush, and you make your brush size big enough, and you hit G, and then go through here, it'll go ahead and it'll have your height information as well as your texture information. So you can go through here and you can do texture and color. So we'll get to cool usage of that in a bit. Uh, alpha, blah, blah, blah. So that was the extractor brushes in a nutshell. And again, we'll do some cooler demos in a bit, uh, but let's talk about the history recall brush. So in the easiest way, I suppose, I can go in here to cube 3D, scrub cube primitive, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, go in here to sub tool. I'm going to append, uh, speaking of Paul Gabriel and Joseph Drust, uh, this is what Joseph Drust did to kind of demonstrate this. And I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, way to kind of explain how the history recall brush works on a individual object and then also um, on multiple objects here. So let's go ahead and hide our cube temporarily and we'll grab this poly mesh sphere and we have X turned on. Let's go ahead and make this a dynamesh. That's so going to be under your geometry dynamesh here. And all that does is allow us to kind of sculpt on this. So if we go through here like BS, uh, grab a snake hook. Um, let's grab a stay quick brush. So we can go through here and we can pull this geometry. You can see it gets a little bit uh, janky in there. Hold down control drag and it'll update that geometry on the fly. Um, alternatively, you can also use Sculptures Pro. You can go through here and you can just kind of pull out and it'll automatically tessellate. Um, and you can hold down shift and then inflate. You can hold down shift and also get rid of stuff too. So again, this is all ZBrush 2019 functionality. Um, so you can go check out those videos if you want to see more on that. But we also have our history slider here. So we'll slide on back. And uh, so we have a, a sphere here. So what we can do is we can go through here and we can start sculpting something. Let's go and turn on Sculptors Pro. And let's go ahead and we'll start carving a uh, face in here. And we'll carve uh, this in here. And we'll go to the side. And we'll pull this out a little bit. And we'll grab our Damien Standard Brush. And then we'll kind of go through here and we'll start, maybe grab our clay brush or maybe a clay buildup brush. And we'll start just making I don't know, something. So we can go through here and again, Damien standard to kind of, usually, you know, when you're sculpting in ZBrush, if you want to do like the bare basics of sculpting in ZBrush, you can get a lot done with the move brush, the Damien standard brush, and the clay brush and or clay buildup brush, uh, and then smooth brush, obviously. So we're going to go through here and we'll just kind of start pushing this in. And then again, go into your clay brush here. I'll knock this back a little bit and again move brush here make sure we're getting some decent uh, draft of our face here and then Damien standard and again you can just control drag out in your canvas and that'll reset that um, that'll reset your not reset but it'll rebuild your um, Man, I cannot sculpt and think tits this morning to save my life. I'm having a real hard time if you can't tell. Uh, it'll re-dynamesh your object when you control or drag. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, another thing we can do is we can hold that control shift. We can go over here to like clip curve. We can go ahead and like maybe, uh, if you don't want to do a full clip curve, hold that control shift, drop that Z intensity down just a bit. Then that'll kind of give you uh, mostly uh, clip curves if you want to kind of maybe find some forms. Uh, if you want to do 100%, then hold on, control shift, grab that Z intensity. And then in that case, you can kind of go through here and you can kind of blammo and then go in here with maybe trim dynamic. That's uh, trim dynamic and H polish are some of those that um, I might use a little bit more often uh, than the, just the standard brushes. But again, clay brush, Damien standard, clay build up, move brush, those are my staples and you can get an awful lot done with just those. So anyway, um, we've got a head going here. We can go through and we can kind of maybe use the pinch brush, kind of pinch this up a little bit. So we've sculpted uh, for a bit and now we have quite a bit of history. So let's say we want to, um, you know what, let's say we want to project some of that uh, sphere back. So we're going to go back here. So we've got this history here. So we can go all the way back. And the cool thing about this is we've been dynameshing this thing over and over again. So we'll go to the back here and we control drag. We're changing this topology um, on the fly. So we're constantly updating this topology. 
Uh, however, I can go all the way back in history to where we just had that original sphere before we even dynameshed it, and we can use this as uh, something we want to project back to. So again, hold down Control and tap. That's going to store that. And then we can go all the way back here to the beginning, and we can go here to BH, History Recall. And just like Z project, you're going to want to probably turn off X symmetry. If you have X symmetry turned on, because it's doing a camera based projection, uh, it could have the potential to suck vertices from the other side all the way through your mesh. So go ahead and turn X symmetry off. And then now, if we go through here, we can use history recall and we can go through and we can recall that sphere. And the sphere it's recalling, it's not changing our topology, it's just basically putting that in memory so you can go back through and you can uh, start projecting back. Now it is projecting this geometry straight towards the camera, so if you want to hold down shift and then smooth these out and then go back and start projecting again, uh, you can do that. You'll also notice, unlike Z projection, the Z project brush, BZP, um, if I wanted to Z project this, I would have to grab a sphere, or go back in history, clone out a sphere, uh, insert it as a subtool, use my Z project brush, just hide just show those two and then go through here and hold down alt and let go of alt and kind of project out and project down and use the Z project brush like this. This one's much easier. All you have to do is store that in history and then go to your history recall brush and then it, it projects up and down at the same time. Uh, if we want to, we can also just do a quick uh, mirror, mirror and weld in the X axis. And <laughs> I actually like this a lot. Um, and we can turn X symmetry back on and then, uh, and then we're back to where we started. So we can just go through here and uh, we can totally turn this into who was the fly guy from Ninja Turtles. 10 points to the person who gets that first because you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this into, um, <laughs> I'm doing a bebop sculpt for my, uh, my stream. So uh, we can definitely, we can definitely use this. What was his name? He was a scientist fly guy. Um, anyway, uh, so that's how you can use history recall on a single object. Now, if we have a cube in here and we have our head, what we can do is let's go ahead and subdivide this cube. We're gonna get Control D, Control D, Control D, just get a little bit more resolution on here. So uh, with this. Um, Fly guy selected, uh, and we, you know what? Uh, let's just do this. We'll go back to the cube, and then we'll do B H uh, R for history recall, and we'll start sculpting on this. And you're going to see when we start sculpting on this, um, and actually, let's go ahead and turn off our fly head. You're going to be, oh, it's picking up the fly head, but in reality, what is it really picking up? It's picking up that sphere. So why is it projecting that sphere instead of our fly head? Well, if you remember, back on this completely separate subtool with completely separate geometry, um, if we click on it, we, hold, we held down control and clicked on that sphere, the sphere um, stage that we are at in our history. So when we go to this completely different subtool and we do BHR for history recall, it's going to project to that version of history in that other subtool. So instead of projecting to the fly head, we're projecting that sphere. Now again, if I turn on polyframe, you're gonna see it's projecting straight back. So go through here and kind of even this geometry out a little bit and then just go back in with your history recall brush. You can just start projecting that sphere back. Uh, if we did, if we were like, I don't want to project the sphere, I want to project uh, my little fly guy, you can go through and you can select the fly guy. And then instead of doing this version of your history, just hold down, uh, actually, I think you just hold down control and um, tap, and that'll get rid of that point. But you can also hold down control and just tap this very latest version. And then when we go back here with our history recall brush, then it's going to start recalling in um, the head instead of the uh, sphere. Now, when we were doing that history recall brush on this object here, and I was like, okay, I only have X symmetry turned on. So, you know, you do one side, and then of course I did a mirror, that's deformation mirror. I should probably not use my deformation mirror. And then geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. So now you can see in my custom menu, I put those right next to each other. So I don't have to dig through, I don't have to go blind doing this all day. So I can do a quick mirror and then I can do a mirror and weld across the X. And when you're doing just regular old sculpting, um, that's totally fine. Oh, another thing I wanna talk about. If I go through here, let's uh, up, up the resolution on this just a little bit on my Dynamesh. And we'll go through here, we'll get some detail. 
I just want to make sure um, let's go into our trim dynamic Damien standard I love how creepy this dude is I don't really remember what it looks like I'm just kind of going through here and doing a um, just trying to get a little bit more detail on him so when I go through and you know what let's do some real obvious detail okay so uh, we've got our our head here and we'll go ahead and make that our latest and we're gonna go through here and we're gonna project so again B H R so we're going through here and we're projecting this back and we're getting some detail, but we're not really picking up what we need. Uh, go in here with your Sculptures Pro and it'll tessellate, uh, oops, delete lower. It'll tessellate on the fly. So you can go through here and just wherever you need that detail. Uh, if you're new to Sculptures Pro, this brush size, there's a lot, there's a lot more Sculptures Pro. Uh, if you go to my um, playlists here, let's see, 2019. Actually, that was a 2018 thing, wasn't it? Yeah, this is all filter stuff. Spotlight, alphas. Whew. Time flies when you're having a fun, man. Super's 2018, what's new is uh, Sculptors Pro stuff, so you can check this one out. Um, or, you know, I'll just link you to this one. Super's 2018, what's new will give you the, the rundown on all the Sculptors Pro stuff. But long story short, you can make your brush size dictate the... Uh, tessellation that you're going to get. So you can go through here and you can start projecting with Sculptures Pro on and you can get the detail you need uh, as you're projecting. How cool is that? That'll also clean up a lot of these artifacts from just projecting straight back. So and then you can go through and smooth it out and then you can project. Uh, so that's kind of neat, I think. Um, cube to sphere. Sculptures Pro, and we we're using History. I want to make sure I don't miss anything obvious. Going through here, we're projecting through History, projecting through different sub tools, we're projecting different resolutions. <laughs> Self-contained. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about right. <sighs> okay. Uh, let me get caught up here in the comments, and also let me get a drink of water here. Starting to get that sweet vocal fry. Uh, purpose of the white screen is for your silhouette. So earlier in the stream, we went over all the thumbnail stuff. So when this posts, uh, check it out on Pixelogic's channel. I'll post it on my channel as well. Cool, cool. Um, here, here, here. Is there a way to hide the white box? Yeah, so that would be under the preferences. So preferences, thumbnails, and then you just turn that off. Like I said, in my making of patchy uh, guy on my YouTube channel, um, boy, that came in handy. A lot more handy than I thought. Um, how do you tell ZBrush not to auto-close UI groups? So when you're going through here on the, on the right side, you can hold down Shift, and it'll do it. It's under Preferences. I want to say UI Menu. Uh, it's in my, it's in the uh, basic ZBrush basics I sent out earlier that uh, enter to ZBrush ideation. Uh, there's settings in here where you can tell it to auto close or not auto close. I want to say maybe interface UI, um, show subtool folders, no, um, auto hide, no, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, that does exist, and in fact, you can actually do it in the right docking menu in the left docking area. You can tell it to close or auto close, and that's this one up here. But it's it's in the basics videos. Uh, Baxter, that sounds right. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. Um, and a lot of this, a lot of the features I'm going to be showing you and kind of how, these are kind of how I thought you could maybe use them after doing this for a very short time, period of time. Uh, a lot of these things, just like anything else ZBrush comes out with, it's going to be, okay, you can, you can use it to do this and you'll use it to do that for a couple of weeks, months, or years. And then somebody's going to come along and go, oh my gosh, 
did you realize if you could use this and bring this in and import this and then use this brush to do this, it completely changes how you do 3D from here on out. That's what a lot of these features end up being a lot of times. So uh, I'm just scratching the surface of what we can do with this stuff. Believe me, I, I'm well aware of uh, my limited abilities with these new things. <laughs> okay. Um, so the so morph targeting, uh, it's a little bit different. This is completely uh, topology dependent. So when you go in here and you do like for example, um, you can go down here to like a morph target. You can store a morph target. You can switch it, and then you can use the Z M. Oops, B Z the morph. Nope. Z. God, brush. Uh, M, B, M, uh, morph, uh, B, M, O, morph brush. Uh, but that is topology dependent if you, you have to have the same topology. Um, so for example, I guess we can do this. So we're going to get a store morph target. We're going to go through here and we're going to sculpt um, some stuff on here. And then uh, we can go through here. We can switch our morph target or we can go to B, M, O and we can morph back here. The caveat to this is we cannot change our topology. So if I go through here, and I say Dynamesh, my morph target disappears because we're changing the um, topology. So that's a cool thing also about history recall. It's topology independent. It's just based on um, things you have in history. So for instance, we can go through here and we can say, hey, you know what? I want to get those dots back. So we can go through here. We can control tap this one, go here, B, H, uh, R, and then you can go through here and just get that back. And uh, if I had, if it was detailed, I could use Sculptures Pro and get it detailed back. Uh, and it's not dependent on having the same vert count. If you have five layers on your models or where to bake just one layer, yeah, you should be able to. Unless I'm missing something here. Oops. Uh, layers, we have a layer. And we're going to sculpt on that layer. And then we have another layer. And we're going to sculpt on that layer. And then, um, we, of course, with layers you can go through, you can dial them in or out. You can make them inverted. You can actually over crank them if you want to. Uh, and then when you're done with this one, um, I think if you want to, let me see. I don't go into layers that often. So if we want to just bake this layer, we can merge stuff. We can delete them. We can, let's see if we turn that off. No, it just bakes one. Hmm. I have to investigate that again. I'm not, I'm not a huge on layers, but did you mention the thumbnail can load the image in the background? Um, yes. You talk about this. Um, let's see. D D D. How do you think a person should learn environment character art specifically or should be able to create any art after becoming an experienced artist? Um, it kind of depends on what you, if you want to get a job uh, and how fast you want to get a job. If you want to be an expert at everything before you get a job, um, you might be on your deathbed before you actually apply for a job. I would say apply for or just make yourself stand out from the crowd in something specific, like something you can really focus in on and be really good at. And then over the course of many, many years, you can become a little bit more of a generalist. It's just my opinion. Uh, on that note, if you want to get a little bit deeper into, if you go to my blog section, it's like, do I need a college degree and uh, pipelines and how do you break into the industry? It's all just my opinion. It's absolutely completely worthless. But if you want to listen to me ramble on that stuff, you can check that out. Um, okay, so again, I apologize if I miss anything. I'm just going to kind of keep moving. How to import Substance Designer height maps on ZBrush for Alpha Map Painting. Yeah, yeah, we can get to that later. Why does ZBrush not have a smooth conform brush? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by conform. Okay, so next up we have uh, Alpha and Texture. So let's talk about that. So we can maybe um, get into stuff we've brought in from Substance specifically. So with Alpha and Texture, we're going to, again, we're going to keep this simple to start with, and then we'll get a little bit more complex as we go. So we're going to go in here. Let's just get real simple. Let's go in here with a polyplane 3D, edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, 
go over here to geometry. I'm going to turn out that smooth modifier so I can keep those edges nice and sharp and we're going to divide this up so we get some decent resolution. And then uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to grab a drag rec st uh, standard brush. Actually, you know what? Let's keep our standard brush, leave our standard brush alone. I'm going to go in here to clone and we're going to do some zany settings with this. So we can go in here to standard brush and we're going to go into drag rec stroke. We're going to give ourselves an alpha and we're going to give ourselves a texture. So let's grab a texture here. Actually, let's grab one that takes up the whole space. So, um, and I have RGB and A turned on and Z add. So when I drag this out, you're going to see um, I'm dragging out Z add and the focal shift is causing to kind of be a little bit softer around those edges. If I want to, I can hit control Z, focal shift down, and then we get a nice clean uh, version of that. However, we're not painting. So let's go over here to the sub tool and let's turn on our um, poly paint there. And now when I drag through, uh, I'm getting the alpha is completely blocking out um, what I have in my texture here. However, if I go in here and I turn that A off, now I can sculpt and I can also get my uh, deformations at the same time. So again, um, we can turn out A on and we can drag that in. One cool thing about this, this, this kind of goes back to the extractor brush a little bit. Um, let's go in here to our texture import and we're going to go in here and we're going to grab a rope. So we're going to grab this rope texture and we're going to see this is just a rope texture with transparency. So I'm going to go and say color. Um, I'm going to say color. I'm going to say texture. I'm going to rotate this once, so we're going in that direction, and we're going to change this to a dot stroke, and we're going to turn this alpha off. So when I go through here, you're going to see I can kind of get a rope going. Let's go in here to stroke, and let's turn on, oh boy, uh, lazy mouse. Well, you can turn on lazy mouse. I kind of even your stroke out. Uh, also, you can go in here to modifiers. You can turn on roll. So when we go through here, we can kind of roll through our image. Now, um, this is also in your extractor brushes. So if I go to BXT and we have our extractor brush and we're going through here, let's turn off RGB for temporarily. So we're going through here and we're making some shapes and we go to BXT and then we hit G and we grab this. Um, we're going to go through and we're going to get this and we have poly paint turned on so it actually did grab the texture. Uh, but if you want to see what st settings it's doing, uh, it's turning on the roll distance right here. And in fact, if you want to compare, like, uh, let's compare the extractor brush with the um, stitch brush. So here we can load up a stitch brush and we've got that setting here. So one thing you can do is you can go in here to your extractor brush and we're going to say control alt and we'll say this is going to be alt X for my hotkey. And then we're going to go into that stitch brush and we're going to hold down control alt that's going to be alt z so if i want to go through here for example and go into my brush settings over here so we can go in here to like maybe uh, samples is a good one depth can sometimes be a good one surface not so good uh, modifiers would be a good one and then over here in your stroke settings as well you can go okay what does my extractor brush have and then what does my uh, stitch brush have. So you can see my lazy radius change, my lazy smooth change, my lazy step stays the same. And then if I go over here to my modifiers, I can just switch between these brushes. I can see, oh, constant tilt is on for my stitch brush. And then up here, my samples, uh, my extractor brush has sample radius down to zero. So you can kind of just very quickly switch back and forth and see what settings kind of work for you. Uh, but if we go back here to our standard brush, you're going to see we're going to paint this rope on here. Um, but we also want to get rid of this alpha on here. Now you may be saying, well, you can turn that alpha on or off, uh, but because we have no alpha loaded, it's not going to do very much. However, we can say this texture, we can say make alpha, and now you can get that rope brush. Let's go ahead and turn off the yet. You can get your rope brush um, and it'll alpha out. However, if we, uh, let me see if I can demonstrate this. You're going to see, let's make this really big. It's It looks okay on the gray, but it's kind of a little bit washed out. You can see this is nice and dark in the shadows, and this is kind of washed out. That's because if we go through here, let's make this a little bit more obvious. Let's go to our skin shader 4. You're going to see that alpha is causing that to not be, it's going to cause it to be transparent uh, the darker it gets. So what we can do is we can go in here to alpha, 
and we can say we got that alpha selected. We can go in here to modify and we can turn up that intensity here. So we're just getting the outline of that. And now we're getting the full color and we're not getting um, that alpha kind of poking through our darker areas. So this is just a fun way to kind of load up uh, brush texture, use your alpha, and then also you can go through here and you can start making cool stuff. Um, and that would be alpha and texture, skin details. Oh, that's another thing too. As speaking of bringing in things from Substance, uh, we can go through here and uh, you bring in stuff from Substance, you can bring in stuff from Texture XYZ and it's the same thing. So if we go in here to Texture, I'm sorry, yeah, Texture Import and we'll grab um, Female Elbow Skin and we'll go ahead and select it and then we'll grab this Alpha Import Female Elbow Skin. And then now with both of those selected, we can do RGB and Z add at the same time. And we'll go ahead and say drag rect. So now we're getting, um, so right here, you're gonna see in the crevices, it's turning transparent. Go ahead and turn that off. And now you're getting the full color. Uh, and it's in this case, I might turn that focal shift down to zero just to get a little bit more overlap in between that here. So now uh, you can turn that on and you have control over if you want that to be turned on or off. Uh, let's go ahead and hit W. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make that not so crazy. And then same thing with uh, if you wanted to go in here to like import, uh, we can grab a mole height and then a mole color import. So now you can grab, uh, you can put in some moles here. Let's go ahead and crank up that Z intensity and you can turn alpha on or off depending on the type of interaction you want that alpha to have with your RGB Z add, with your uh, surface there. Um, measure circumferences within ZBrush. There's not a uh, there's not a circumference. There is a analyze. If you go in here to transform, this is in 2020 as well. Uh, analyze selected subtool generic unit sizes, and then there's also a macro that they loaded, that you can load and uh, return surface area. So you can get surface area, you can get general, um, you can also hit, uh, hit W, and then we'll get to this in a bit too, so we can hit W and then Y, oops. Hold on, edit. Um, w and then Y for your transpose line and you can use this to measure. So you're going to see this is one, depending on your unit scale, so if you go into Z plugin, scale master, you can go through here and you can set your scene scale this way. Um, I think there's a three, you can do that in the 3D print hub as well maybe. Um, update size ratios, but scale master is probably where you want to end up. Uh, if you want to see more on this, just click that scale master uh, button here and you can click on this button and it'll take you to a YouTube channel, Joseph Dress explaining it. Uh, but you can use this to set your scene scale and then you can use your transpose line to kind of measure units, but it's, yeah, it's not going to give you like a nice wrap. You'll have to do a little bit of, um, actually, actually what you could do, uh, let's get a circumference. So now that I think about it with this new functionality we haven't talked about yet, so we're going to go into the slice curve here and we're gonna hold down slice curve and then do a brush radius and we're gonna slice through. Uh, if we don't wanna mess up our head here, we'll go ahead and duplicate that off. So let's go through here. And okay, so we've got that slice through and this will be our circumference. Let's go ahead and delete hidden. And just to make it a little bit easier, let's half, let's zero mesh half this thing. And okay, so we've got this and we wanna go ahead and say, let's go over here to Z plugin and we're gonna to go to no. We're going to go to uh, UV Master, and it is symmetrical, so we can go ahead and say Unwrap. And then if we say Flatten, you, there might be a chance where if we go in here... Um, God, why do I keep doing that? I keep hitting T for Transpose. Um, w, and then use our Transpose line, and then now you can maybe get your units, or is that is it not doing units? I can't tell. Let's turn off X symmetry here. So let's say our circumference is 1.9702 units. 
we'll say unflatten. Oh, another thing we can do is, uh, so now that we have UVs, we can go down here to our UV, and we're gonna get to this in a bit too. We can morph our UVs, so now they're just kind of sitting there, and then we can hit W. This might give us our actual unit scale. Okay, 1.3074 units. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's, uh, you know, it's probably not, I don't know. I thought that might work, but maybe not. Because, yeah, I think that's a little bit small. Oh, you know what? Maybe not. 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. I don't know. Give that a, give that a test. Uh, smooth projection, not just projection, but also smoothing as you project it to underlying geo. You can do that with morph. Uh, if you watch the double negative presentation from Zebra Summit 2018, you can use... Uh, you can smooth and sculpt and then use morph um, where it is. You can use this morph, uh, project morph down here. So you can make all the changes. You can smooth and then you can project a morph back. So that'll give you the illusion of like skin sliding and then morphing it back. Um, cool. Um, You know, if a way to extrude with QMesh or extrude in world space instead of the polygon normals, how would you extrude something totally horizontally? The polygons are tilted. Uh, that would just be here. Initialize. Tilted. And we want to say, okay, I want to have this one and I want to QMesh it out. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say mask a single poly invert that mask, W, reset this to world space, control drag out, control drag out, control drag out, control drag out. And you don't have to be in that view, obviously you can just go through here and just do your world space extrusions. Cool. All right, uh, moving right along here. So that was poly, now that you were just kind of doing the basics here, uh, poly painting, oh, poly paint fade opacity. So this is kind of a neat one. Let's go ahead, I'm going to Wait, there's one thing I want to save in here, and that would be our Baxter head. So, save as uh, streaming turtle power Baxter. Okay, so we'll go ahead and Get out of there. Load that back up. Here's what we were talking about Photoshop earlier. Uh. <laughs> All right, so next we're going to talk about uh, poly painting UVs and then poly painting fade opacity. I think you guys will like this. And then sculpting on your. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. So like we were mentioning earlier, if you go to my YouTube channel and you check out this uh, patchy time-lapse new features when I was going through and I was doing these um, these fabric cloths here, you're gonna, and also this kind of sculpting here, I'm like sculpting around, I'm like, hey, you know what would be easier is if I flatten this out and then I sculpt it on it. So wait for it. I, I, I My brain kicks in here and then I'm like, okay, I can just flatten this out and then go and sculpt on it, as well as going through and sculpting uh, and painting uh, in a flattened view. And you can actually use history recall with a flatten. So let's talk about that. Um, but first, whenever you're sculpting something, let's load up, uh, I don't have it in my demo projects, but I do have it in my in my folders here. I think we got a reptile creature. So you know when you're sculpting on something, and let's go ahead and modify this material a bit. Uh, modifiers, diffuse, there you go. Okay, uh, you're sculpting on something and your poly paint and your materials kind of getting in the way a little bit. You can go into, oh boy. Um, just lost it, uh, fade opacity. So uh, render, that's gonna be on the render menu. Sorry, again, 
this, see, I would have edited that out. I would have looked like a total pro. Uh, doing this live is a little bit different. So we're going to go in here to render. And under here, you're going to have a fade opacity. So you can actually go through here and you just be like, okay, you know what? Let's switch this over to our um, startup material. And I'm going to go to M color fill object. And then, uh, so now I can go through here. And so here's my poly paint on there. And if my poly paint's getting in the way, I can temporarily fade it out, go in here and sculpt to my heart's content, and then I can fade it, uh, fade it back in. So there is that. In fact, let's go over here to skin shader. It might look a little bit better. There you go. So we got our poly paint. We don't have our poly paint. Uh, and you can kind of fade that in and out. Uh, let's go in here. Is there anything else I would want to show? Uh, oh, uh, okay, let's do this. So we have our head here. Let's go into our material and crank up the diffuse a little bit. So we do have the ability now, if we want to go in here to our, say our poly paint, we can say adjust colors. So this is completely UV independent. All it is doing is looking at our vertex poly paint color. Uh, and you can go through here and you can do like a hue shift. So you can go through here and you can do a hue shift. You can do uh, RGB intensity really quickly. So if you want to kind of crank that intensity up and if you're okay with that, you can hit okay. And that'll update your poly paint. You can control Z out of that, any of those changes. You can also go back in here um, into adjust colors. And you can pick individual uh, sections here. So if I like these, um, these little darker areas on him, I can go through here or her and go through here and you can select on those. It'll go ahead and mask those areas out. If you want to invert the mask, you can go over here and you can invert it. So you mask everything else out, uh, or I'm sorry, turn off inverse mask. Uh, you can also hide the mask temporarily if you want to be like, hey, what is it really showing on here? You can also hide the colors if you're um, getting a little bit confused as to what it's actually masking. And you can also hide materials if it's not, if your materials aren't helping, it'll just go to a flat. So you can go through here and you can kind of mask exactly where you want to um, adjust this. So if you want to like say temporarily hide our mask and now with that masked, I can go through here and I can change just those uh, darker areas. So now a lot of times I'll look at ask like, how do I save off a mask that I can go and bring in? Now you can just use your poly paint uh, and you can also change that tolerance as well. You can see how it's kind of getting those eyeballs a little bit. Just bring that, bring that tolerance down just a bit. And now you can do a hue shift or if you don't want to do a hue shift, let's say, you know what? I just want to tint those a little bit redder. So you can go in here to a red and then you can just tint those with just like a, so like a little bit of a red color. Say okay. And then uh, it'll bring in your mask and you can just control drag to unmask. Um, on that same note, if we go in here to adjust colors, you can just mask. So if I want to say, hey, you know what? I want to grab all these purple areas here and I'm going to bring that tolerance down. So I'm just grabbing uh, these purple areas. If you want to grab more, just go in here and just grab like next to that purple area. And you can kind of between these two, grab pretty much exactly what you need. And then instead of overwrite, just turn it to mask and hit okay. And then you hop out of here and you just have, go into solo mode, you just have that mask. So now you can go through here and you can poly paint, uh, you could do crevice painting and stuff like that. Um, and you can just mask that. Uh, also, when you do have a mask, you can go in here to your masking and you can say, adjust your mask. You can go in here and you can kind of adjust your profile here. You can apply that profile change. If you want to kind of get rid of some of those stragglers, you can run a, like a, a little bit of a levels on it. You can also turn that blur off uh, or it's a little bit weird. Huh. I wonder why that's such a harsh transition. Uh, you can kind of go through and you can clean that up a little bit uh, and you can change the flux shift, all that good stuff. However, also, instead of using poly paint to get your mask, you can go in here to masking, go to mask by color, and you can say mask by poly paint. So now instead of having all these color options down here, now you just have masks. So you can go through here and say, I want to grab all these red pieces here and then say, okay. And now all of those are masked. You can invert that mask and do whatever you want to do. Um, 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 um. Yeah, there is. Okay. Let me get them in here. So there's mask by poly paint, mask by color. There's also in here under texture, if you load up, um, this texture right here and we have this selected uh, there's also an adjust colors in the texture area so even with um, just a texture loaded it works exactly like the poly paint one here um, so if you want to grab just a color here and you want to say tint that to another color you can you can hit okay 
and then now that texture is completely changed and then you can go ahead and keep using that texture so textures poly paints masks um, let me make sure I'm kind of skipping around my notes a little bit here um, poly painting masking texture adjustments yeah uh, no UVs you can undo the operation grab similar tones blur mask masking mask by color mask by poly paint yeah that's about right so uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of fun with that later with some other objects pop that stuff we can get in wouldn't you ever work for pixel logic um you know what I'm comfortable in Austin I love the pixel logic guys though love ZBrush um no one style teaching class you teach like no one else <laughs> well thanks if, if that's a compliment unless you mean I teach like no one else and that uh, I'm a horrible teacher um, but thank you it's just other bridge tutorial really enjoying it uh, excellent do you consider streaming Houdini on your personal channel uh, yeah if I was good at it I would um, you know I do have a little bit of stuff like uh, I, I, I try to keep pretty broad uh, but depending on how often I use something uh, for me to stream it, I have to be pretty comfortable with it. So for me, like ZBrush, even the ZBrush betas, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm like, I haven't really used all this stuff all that much. So I, uh, it's a little uncomfortable for me. Uh, I can stream just general ZBrush, no problem. Uh, but other programs where it's like, hey, I again, I, f I make myself not look like a moron in editing. So I can I can make a Houdini walkthrough, and I did on my channel. You can go through, and it does. We go from ZBrush to Houdini, and then back to ZBrush. Um, and I look like a champ. However, uh, I had to learn a lot of that and record it and then edit it. And then it made me look like a champ. And in fact, uh, I am a complete hack fraud. Um, <laughs> truth be told. So let's go ahead and load up our... Hmm, let's go in here to... So we have a command uh, patchy. So we have patchy final. We'll go ahead and load that one up. And on Patchy Final, let's talk a little bit about this. So uh, here's my uh, all my wrinkly, sculpty stuff and all my nano mesh stuff I did in here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this and all my stitches and stuff. We'll talk a little bit about that. So we got this one here. I'm going to delete other. And then we're going to also load up Patchy Precloth. There we go. And then we're going to select this one. And then we're going to delete other. Just, I mean, you don't have to delete other. Obviously, it'll work with all the stuff. I'm just trying to simplify how many things I have to go through. So we're going to say delete other. So we have uh, two versions. We have one before I did stuff and one after I did stuff. So this one before I did stuff, uh, this came up in the uh, questions section on my YouTube channel. Is how did I get those kind of um, seams along those polygroups? So going through here, just mass by polygroups and then zero meshing. Uh, pretty... Pretty easy to do that. So if I go in here, I'm going to drop this to the subdivision level five temporarily, and we're going to go down here to masking. We're going to mask our groups. I may have misspoke on Twitter. I think I said mask border. You can mask a border if there is an open edge, but in this case, we need to mask groups. Let's go ahead and say grow mask once, and then we'll hold down control alt uh, and tap on here just to tighten that up a little bit. Control tap to invert that, and then we're going to go in here to deformation deflate. So we're going to say like maybe negative one and that'll go through and that'll kind of deflate there. Um, in fact, let's do negative two. You can also just drag on here. If you click and drag, it's gonna be a pretty harsh transition maybe. Uh, if you want a little bit more finesse, you can tap once. And I think if you, uh, some of these, some may have uh, a little slider above that'll have, um, and by the way, I'm in the deformation menu in here. Uh, so inflate, you can just click and drag. This one doesn't look like it has finesse on it, but we can go through here. We just kind of click and drag here, and that's going to give us our inside portion. How do we get that lumpy outside portion? So we can go through here, and we can just do the, basically the exact same thing. We can say mask by features, and then we can grow, and I'm going to get kind of that lumpy outside section there. Uh, if we want to tighten that up a little bit, just hold down control alt and that'll clean it up a little. Uh, and then we're going to invert that. Now, if I start inflating now, it may start uh, doing some weird stuff to the inside. You can also just go back to mask by features again and just mask out um, the inside of that uh, area there. So now we can go through here. And in fact, let's, instead of doing an inflate, let's try doing a deformation inflate balloon. That might work a little bit better. And you can make this mask, oh boy. This one might have one, yeah. Uh, 
All right, I'm just going to type in some numbers. Two. And again, if we want to hold down Control Alt, we can tighten that up just a little bit more, and then we can go through here, and we can get that little ridge around there. Now, uh, if we want to put stitches on there, what we can do is because we have access to our polygroup borders, we can go through here and we can go into our stroke menu. And we have all these curve functions available to us. We can say, I want to frame our polygroup border mesh. And then I can go into my brushes here. Uh, this is also from zbrushguides.com, Pablo Munoz Gomez's website. Um, we can go into geometry stitches here. And we have these stitches here. These are IMM brushes, you can go to my YouTube channel. The basics of IMM brushes I go through uh, again on my this uh, intro to ZBrush, ZBrush for ideation. It'll take you through the basics of that. You, these are really simple to create. Um, but now that we have that, we can go through here and we can just tap on there. Um, oops. Uh, if you don't, let's undo that. I forgot that we had subdivision levels on here. So if we want to mess around with something and not mess around with our subdivision levels, we can go ahead and duplicate this off. And then we can go through and we can do our frame on this duplicate. Let's go into solo mode here. And then we can go down here to like delete lower, delete higher. And then we can just click on there. And then we can make our stitches. Um, it's inverting them. I wonder why. Let's go to stroke, frame mesh, brush, select. Huh. Interesting. Or maybe it's only, let's go into our depth here. So under your brushes, you can go in here to depth and you can update that depth on the fly as well just by, can, just by tapping on there. Um, I wonder if it's because, you know what we could do? We could say, let's delete this one. Wait, this is the one that has, yeah. So we'll take this one, we'll delete it. I'm gonna take this one and we're going to duplicate it. And then on this one, we're gonna go back to, I'm not exactly sure why I would care about that necessarily, but let's go through here and we're gonna say, stroke frame mesh. We'll turn off solo mode and then on this one here, there we go. Uh, I think it was getting a little bit confused uh, when I was doing the inflate balloon, maybe that line got, maybe some of those vertices got, um, those vertex points got confused. So now we can go through here and we can make that a little bit bigger. We can tap off, we can go say split mass points uh, or you can do visibility, hide point, delete. And then now you've got your stitches around those areas here. And this is where I went through on, say, this one. And go through here. And um, we we're doing kind of these, sculpting things in and then sculpting out a little bit. And then once you have um, something that you like, you can go through here with your extractor brush. Let's make these a little bit more self contained. And now I made these stitches a lot bigger <laughs> than I did in my original. Let's actually go to Smooth Stronger as well. Uh, that's going to be in your light box brushes, smooth brushes. So we go through here, and we have this. So we're going to go to, uh, let's go into solo mode here. We can do BXT on here. So BXT, that's our extractor brush. Make our brush size big enough. Hit G, and then go through here and grab this. And now this is where I was like, okay, um, I've got this grabbed and now I can go through here and I can just start putting the wrinkles on here. Let's go ahead and drop that intensity down just a bit. Uh, however, it's a lot easier if you go down here to your um, UV map, morph UV. And then if you have UVs on your object, you can just go through here and be like, okay, I know where my uh, edges are. So you can just go through here really quickly and just start dialing in all of your wrinkles that you want to put along the edges there. And then you can go out of Morph UV, and there you go. Now your wrinkles are all uh, transferred along that border. Uh, now, that's not to say you can't just sculpt in there. You can also Morph UV, and we can go in here to Texture, 
uh, import. And so what I was grabbing was these fabric patterns out of Substance Painter. So I'll just go through here and we'll grab like this one, go to texture. We have it selected, I'm gonna throw it in the spotlight and we can just go ahead and shrink this down. Now, if you just start painting, so if we go into Z and then Shift Z to turn it off and then Z to toggle between the gizmo and then the painting um, one. So you can go there with our standard brush, turn on RGB and you can actually sculpt through Spotlight as well. But if you just want to paint, um, let's go ahead and turn off L. You can go through in your paint, but it is like, it's it's a small pattern. So it's like, okay, if we unmorph our UVs here, it's like, okay, this is too big. I want it to be smaller. So we'll go back to Morph UV here and we'll hit Z. I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna tile this to three, two, three, and then we'll go ahead and scale it up a bit. So now we're getting more of that texture. Let's do one more, one, one. And then now as we go through and paint, oops, uh, we can go through and we can just start painting these fabric textures on there. And then if we uh, shift Z and then morph UV out of this, uh, now we've got it all on our um, object here. Um, another thing we could we could have done uh, that I didn't, I was actually using history recall, we'll get to that in a second, but um, if you want to, we have Morph UV. If I go in here and I turn our polyframe on, you're gonna see these are all different poly groups. So now if I go in here to say texture import, and we grab another um, texture here, we just add it here, we drop this down, and again, tile one, two, three-ish, tile one, two, three-ish, scale it up. If you want to drop that um, opacity down, you can just so you can kind of see a little bit better. Uh, it's not going to change the color information you're passing through. It's just going to dial that in. Um, so now when we go through and paint on here, we have our standard brush with RGB turned on. Go in here to auto masking and just turn mask by polygroups up to 100. So now you can be, you can just like, I want to paint here. And the first polygroup that you click on, it'll go through and just keep you contained. So you don't need to worry about, I mean, you can also just hold down control shift and isolate if you want to. Um, it's just like working with geometry. And then Shift Z, go ahead and morph UV out of there. And then there you go. Nicely wrapped on there. Um, yeah, so there was that. Uh, let me get caught up here. <laughs> you do a ZBrush to Photoshop lesson. Uh, there's a, if you do ZBrush to Photoshop in your Z plugins, um, it used to be if you clicked on here, I thought it went to a, um, well, you can send that to Photoshop. Um, I thought there was like a little tutorial was in here. I guess not. Uh, I'm trying to think of, I'm sure somewhere on my YouTube channel. I don't do it often, but um, it's in my, it's in some of my series. You go over scaling all subtools with the doc similar to all the SCL export without exporting. For example, scaling all subtools in relation to one unit cube asking for a 3D printing scale. That would be under your either Z plugin 3D print hub uh, updating your size ratios or Z plugin um, scale master. Just click on that, click on that YouTube or click through um, these explanations here. Uh, that'll be setting your Z scene scale. Uh, and essentially what that's gonna do is change your geometry size ratio, which G ZBrush usually likes to keep that around two. And then on export, that'll change your export uh, scale to be whatever. So if you bring in something from Marvelous Designer, uh, it'll try to bring it in at around two under your size. And then on export, it's gonna be like 950. It's gonna have a multiplier in here where it's gonna export your scale by like 950 or something like that. Um, yeah, so you, I did do UVs for this. So for example, um, let's do something that doesn't have UVs. Um, let me grab um, let's say, what would that be under? Streaming, turtle power, bebop, block out. Let's go out of solo mode. Uh, so here's something we've been working on my live stream for a little bit, and we have a pair of pants here. I don't think these pants have UVs. So uh, it does have subdivision history though. So what we can, and that's kind of important. If you wanna use UV master, you wanna be able to have the, the ability to kind of go down in your subdivisions and then go back up. Now, if you can you can sculpt, uh, and this is something we went over the live stream or any number of my videos where you sculpt in DynaMesh until you get to a certain point and then you zero mesh and then you project your detail back uh, just to have something with UVs. So let's go ahead and say, okay, here's our pants. And very quickly, well, let's take a look at these pants. So we've got polyframe turned on and you're gonna see we have a cap here and a cap here. Those are separate subtools. Uh, this isn't mirrored. So um, because it's cloth, it's not necessarily mirrored. So that's that. 
Uh, however, what we can do is we can go over here to our Z plugin. And we can say <gasps> UV Master. And we're going to go over here to, uh, it's not symmetrical. We do have poly groups, so we want to go ahead and keep those. And then we can say um, work on clone. Very important. Work on clone. And then we're going to go, let's turn that down a little bit. Um, so you can say work on clone. And then we're going to say unwrap. So it's going to look at our poly groups and pop those off into their own separate islands. And then it's going to unwrap our mesh. We can hit flatten if we want to see how it flattened our mesh out. This looks fine. So we're going to unflatten this. We're going to say copy our UVs, go back to our pants, and then just say paste our UVs. If you want to see those UVs, um, you can always go in here to like your texture map. And you can say uh, create a texture map from UV check. Now I'll go through and check your UVs. If you want to see wireframe, just turn on your polyframe here and say new from UV map and that'll go ahead and give you or UV check. There you go. And that'll give you a little wireframe of your object on your texture. Um, so there's that. However, you can also go in here now to UV map and you can morph UV and then you can start, uh, you can just go into solo mode, you can start sculpting uh, on this object. Now it might be a little bit weird to look at because we don't really know how this thing ended up, got to where it is. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit easier on ourselves. We're going to go down here to Morph UV, and we're going to say, you know what? For my purposes, I want to, um, let's go into RGB with our standard brush, and we're just going to kind of paint on our object here. It's like, okay, I want to have a seam that goes from here to here. And then on the other side here, a seam from here to here. Let's go ahead and also, um, underneath the brush, I'm going to turn mass by polygraphs down to zero. Uh, so those are where I want the seams to go. And if you want to, if you're just going to be sculpting, you can sculpt and paint at the same time, obviously. Uh, but just for this, I'm just going to be sculpting. We're going to get rid of the poly paint. So I'm going to say, you know what, I want a seam here. And also, I want a seam that's going to go down the back of the leg here. Uh, so previously in ZBrush, what you'd have to do is you'd have to just be very careful. You'd have to move and hide polygons. Um, and if and again, like we were talking about earlier, if you go in here to render, if you did want to just put a seam along the side here, and this side is not too bad. You can go to your Damien standard brush, for example, and just start putting a seam on here, but it's like, ah, it's dark. I can't really tell what I'm doing. Temporarily go into your render and then just change that fade opacity so you can kind of just barely see it. And now you can see, um, gosh, what's going on in material? It's killer. Turn that diffuse down a bit. There we go. Um, so now we can kind of see a little bit better where that line is. And then if we want to, we can go back to our render. We can say fade opacity all the way off or back. Uh, however, it's going to be a lot easier getting these seams in here. In fact, we were talking about this earlier. Let's go back to our uh, brushes and our light box brushes. We got some stitches in here. Let's just grab some stitches. And then now we can go to our morph UV. And then now we know exactly. Let's go ahead and crank up our lazy. Oh, I guess our lazy radius is already pretty good. So we can kind of go through here and we can say, you know what? Right along here is where I want those stitches to be laid in. And then, oof, uh, I probably should have controlled this a little better. I'll show you how you can control your uh, zebra seams. It's actually pretty close to where I would have wanted a natural seam. Um, but we'll go ahead and unmorph those UVs. And then now you're going to see uh, if we go through here and we turn off our poly paint. Uh, a lot easier to get those stitches uh, laying it out flat. As well as if we go in here to our morph UV and you want to bring in. Oh, perfect. So perfect. Yeah, Z and then Alt S. Um, let's go to RGB. And now we can just paint in. We'll go ahead and paint down here. One more for UV. Oh my god. That has got to be the coolest. Now, of course, uh, when you go in here and, and you're doing your UV stuff, like for example, if we go back to that clone we were working on and we did our Z plugin UV master, you can enable control painting. It's like, okay, I want to uh, really protect any front seams, areas like this, and then I want to really attract them. You can attract from ambient occlusion, um, 
or you can just paint it in manually. And then you can also change your density in here. You see, like, I want this to be a lot more detail on my UVs and a lot less detailed over here. Um, you can also do poly groups for the front and the back if you wanted to just be like, hey, you know what? I want, uh, this is gonna be really ugly, but I wanted to put like, you know, a poly group, I want a poly group here, 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 and here, and here, and this, you can just have poly groups turned on and then you can unwrap it based on your poly groups. So a lot of different ways you control your UVs and then when you go to lay them out, so if we do like poly groups unwrap. Now, these UVs, yeah, you're gonna see how when I went to unwrap, it got rid of the slicing. You don't want to change your topology because when you go to copy it back, it has to be the same bird order. Uh, but when we go in here and we say unwrap and then we hit flatten, uh, you can go through here and you can hold down control and tap and you can just move your UVs around. You can scale them around. You can go through here and you can move it. You can hold down shift and smooth. You can mask your borders. Um, any number of things you want to do if you want to kind of change these UVs to be whatever you want. Um, and you're going to see if I go out of that um, zero to one space, if you go out of unflatten and then flatten it again, it'll pack it right back into that zero to one. So you can do any changes you want to your UVs. Um, and then when you apply your textures and stuff, maybe you make it a little bit easier to control. Um, yeah, morph UV. And sorry if I missed anything, just keep shouting them out. Do you use your whole screen of your intuos or just a part? Uh, I just I use a section. So when I'm doing my, actually when I'm streaming right now, what you see, uh, this is my monitor setup. So giant monitor here, giant monitor here. And this little section in that top monitor is ZBrush. And then I have a lot of space around it. Uh, so you're only seeing this. So I have my intuos, my Wacom uh, mapped to just that section of my screen. And then I have a lot more real estate around that. So when I'm streaming and stuff, it's 1080, 1920 by 1080. Cool. Um, working on any games recently you can talk about? I don't know what I can talk about. There's some really cool stuff coming up, but I'm, I'm under like five NDAs right now. So I just choose not to talk about anything. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So. Let's get back into, uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I want to make sure you guys got everything you need to get rocking and rolling. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun. Not that we haven't been having fun. Do I want to save this? Because that's pretty sweet. Save as. Save that in our block out. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with the vest, uh, with the body and stuff like that. In fact, speaking of the body, let's go ahead and let's clear out a ZBrush real quick. We'll have a little bit of fun with... Uh, skin texture painting and maybe have a little bit of fun modifying that stuff. And I say maybe because I haven't actually tried this. Uh, I just grabbed some resources, so we'll see how it goes. 2020 demo. Uh, we'll grab our commander head from years back. And uh, what we can do is we can take this head with Morph UV and we can just paint textures directly on it. So we can go in here to texture, import, and let's go ahead and just grab one of these heads here. And if I want to go ahead and even just modify this texture, I can. I can go again to adjust colors and I can change the RGB intensity, hue, shift, and all that good stuff. Uh, or I can also do it after it's been a poly paint. I kind of leave that up to you. Um, so let's go in here to subtool. I'm going to turn off everything except for his skin areas. And again, we're going to go down here to morph target, not morph target, UV map, morph UV. It's going to spread them out. So you can already see, like, if you wanted to bring in some, like, displacement maps and use Spotlight to kind of go through and brush on your detail, uh, you can. One thing we can talk about, if I want a little bit of indication of where these things are, you can use your polyframe. If you turn your polyframe on now, it's just going to be a mess of really high-resolution stuff. However, if you go out of Morph UV, drop your subdivision level down to 1, turn on polyframe, go back up, and you're going to have a simpler polyframe. So I hope when we morph UV, there you go. Not quite, not quite a fit. And in fact, if you go over here to fill, you can turn off your fill and now you have a simplified uh, polygon layout. However, that's still not quite good enough for me for positioning my features. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry, turn off a line cursor to surface. And we're just gonna grab a little bit of a darker area, RGB turned on. Let's go ahead and turn that texture off. There we go. So I'm just gonna give myself indications of where the dark areas are is going to kind of let me know like where the, and this guy's face is totally busted. 
like his nostrils all over the place. Obviously he's missing uh, some very important sections of his mouth here. So these are going to kind of be his lips are kind of curled underneath. Um, these are going to kind of be his bottom lip here. So I'm just going to give myself some indications of where I want to be painting uh, when I'm using this guy. And also we can maybe even do his hairline in here, although that's not nearly as important. But if you wanted to, you could go through here and map his hairline. Uh, okay, so now we've got this here. Let's go ahead and say Morph UV. And let's go ahead and grab that texture. So texture, select it, add it to Spotlight. And then now I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit. We're going to take this opacity down and then I apologize in advance. Um, like I said, my wife is flying back from Japan and uh, <laughs> so I'm wrangling these squeaky dogs. Uh, so now we're just going to kind of position uh, our head in the space. Now again, my features are all over the place. You can go through Spotlight and you can kind of move these things around. Uh, but you know what? I think for our purposes what we can do is we can just start lining up some features. Actually first Let's do this. RGB, standard brush. We can go ahead and um, turn off X symmetry. We can start painting. I'm going to hit Shift-Z. I'm going to hit uh, C, color, fill object, just to kind of get a base color going. And then now we can go through here and we can start coloring in like where our face would kind of go. Actually, shoot. Let's do this. Let's go. Okay, I do want to fill, but I want to leave these dark areas alone. So let's go in here to our masking. Mask by color, mask by poly paint. And we're going to select these dark areas here and say OK. And then I can invert that mask. Or don't invert that mask. And then I go to color, fill object. There we go. See how easy that is now? So uh, back where we started, Shift Z. Uh, we're going to go through here with our standard brush and we're going to paint in where we want our detail. Now the eyeballs again are going to be kind of in this area and also probably a little bit bigger. And then the ears are kind of over here and we can kind of, kind of get those in the place-ish. Oh, here's another thing too. So when I hit Z, I'm going to take this intensity and I'm going to drop that back just a little bit. Some of those pure blacks are starting to make it go um, transparent. So I don't necessarily want that. And then we'll go over here to this side. And then we'll line up this ear. Sorry, it's a little bit boring. And uh, obviously you're going to want to take your time and, you know, do it, make sure everything's cool. But we're just going to do a quick demo here. And then the bottom of my mouth is somewhere in this area. So we're going to kind of plop this right in here. And this will be good enough. And then that bottom lip, we can try to be like, hey, man, let's give you a little semblance of a bottom lip kind of got stretched out there and you're and you got mutilated but we can give them a shot we can be like there you go buddy okay so uh, now that we have that we can go through here let's go to our uh, uv map more for uv back and let's go ahead and switch this over to our skin shader 4. boy it looks a little bit rough but we can do a little bit of cleanup here so i'm going to hit c let's run an x symmetry again and uh, first thing i'm going to do is get rid of these areas here and then we can kind of clean up uh, these areas like so. Now you may remember, let's go ahead and in fact let's go in here and with our standard brush or stroke and then we'll turn on maybe just give it a little bit of flavor. Let's go in here with our Alpha 7. And we can kind of start, kind of just lightly brush this in. You can actually add uh, streaks uh, to this type of thing as well and uh, you know modify this as needed. We'll go through here and kind of clean this up just a little bit. I'm just tapping C to inherit those colors. Now, if you remember, uh, we can also go through here. That's, that's actually, sorry, it bugs me. 
Uh, you can go through here with the extractor brush. So if you like, uh, you know, this hair here. So let's go to, um, let's turn off X symmetry BXT. And we can grab, it'll grab the height information and the texture information uh, at the same time. So we can hit G and we just go and grab some hair here. Give it a second. And there we go. You can go through here. We can just start painting that hair on there. Now, if it's not detailed enough, you can see maybe it got a little bit grainy. Uh, what you can also do is when you're going through here and you're grabbing it, it's going to take it a little bit longer. You can go in here to your alpha. And remember we were talking about earlier, when we hit from brush, um, it's going to ask you how wide do you want it. By default, it's 128. If we set this to say 512, um, the length is always going to be determined by how long you drag it. But the width is going to be the overall kind of texture density. So if we change that to 512, uh, we can go through here and we can just kind of grab. And then again, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's doing over long, and that'll get you more texture resolution. But basically, they kind of blur out the ends, so as you're, you can kind of do a seamless transition. There you go, a little bit more higher res for you. So now let's say, um, let's go ahead and turn on everything back on here. Let's say I wanted to do, well, first of all, let's go ahead and grab this. We got the skin material. Oops, I guess we don't. Skin shader four, we're gonna say M, color, fill object, and then turn RGB back on. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to, now that we can select, we are having the hardest time, or I'm having the hardest time, I should say. Um, Z add M, we have skin shader four. So we're just gonna fill with a skin shader four color material. And then we can go in here to really whiskey. Um, our material here, and we're going to say under modifiers, there is, oh, I'm sorry, under wax modifiers, you can crank up the strength. It's going to yell at you and say you need to turn on your render. So render properties, wax preview, and then we can start giving him a little bit of a little wax strength in that skin there. Uh, and then now, when you go in here to our light and go through here, we can start you know, getting some good renders. Now that shadow's not gonna work. So we can go in here to our render properties. Sorry, uh, tangent, uh, we got shadows here. We're gonna go into our shadow properties here. We're gonna drop that global strength down a little bit and change that angle just to blur it just a bit. There we go. So uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Now another thing we can do, we know we can do this, is we can go in here to our poly paint and we can say adjust colors. So if I wanna do Maybe make them a little bit more undead. Let's drag them into the greens just a little bit and drag his saturation down just a little bit and maybe his RGB intensity up just a tad. Maybe drop his HSV intensity. So we're gonna turn him into a Frankenstein. Bam. Okay, so uh, also that strength is a little bit much for me. Let's go into our uh, wax. Did I get rid of that already? Wax strength here. Okay, so uh, we now have a uh, Frankenstein guy. So let's go ahead and let's start using some of our stuff that we've learned up to this point. And we'll start using maybe extractor brush to kind of do some cool stuff. So I'm gonna go my Damien standard brush. We've got, it's automatically Z sub. Let's turn on RGB and let's do like a kind of a, a cut along the side of his head here. So we're gonna go through here and we'll put in maybe a little uh, deep cut and we can go through here and again if we're going through and we're sculpting on this thing and it's kind of getting in the way just go back into your render and then do your uh, fade opacity so we can kind of see what we're sculpting a little bit better uh, so I'm going to get rid of your poly paint just kind of knocks it back just a little bit so now I'm going to put stitches over this if you try to go through now with your standard brush with uh, Z add turned on it's going to kind of hitch and let's turn that brush off off it'll hitch as it goes over that line and in fact another thing you can do if you want to is you can just tap shift and get rid of that and we can change our material so you can see as I go over that line see how it kind of has a little hitch across it um, we can do this where we can now go you know what let's go back in our history and we can go ahead and hold down control tap and then we're gonna go back to our let's go back one uh, BH history recall and then we can just go back where we want these stitches and we can just smooth it out first there we go 
So uh, now we can go back in with our standard brush. We'll just do it like a darker brown, Z add, RGB turned on with our standard brush. And let's go ahead and keep fading. There we go. So I can see a little bit better. So now I can go through here and we're poly painting where we want the edge of these stitches to go. And we're kind of kind of put a little divot on either side. Okay, so we have that. Uh, let's bring our opacity back. And then across here, let's go ahead and just do like a, maybe I don't know, yellowy bandage color. Uh, RGB Z intensity, let's go ahead and crank that Z intensity up a bit. And then we'll put some stitches across here. Uh, this is another instance where you could do a repeat um, shift one to repeat the stroke, but I think this will work just fine. And this will be the stitches we want uh, to put on our little Frankenstein guy. Uh, now we can go in here to, let's bring our fade opacity back. So let's make sure it's wide enough. BXT for extractor brush. Let's hit G. Let's just grab our stitches here. And we left the, uh, the side guys. We have a 512 texture, probably a little bit overkill. Um, but now we can just go through here. Let's go into solo mode. And we can just kind of... And we can give them a little bit of that Frankenstein treatment. There we go. Like so. Uh, how you guys doing? <laughs> uh, yes, we'll get to that in a second. Um, cool. Right on. Okay, so yeah, everything, I think we're gonna get to that stuff in a second. So we've talked about extractor brush. I think we've hit everything uh, we need to. History recall brush. Um, oh, that was another thing. Let's do, you know what? If we had done, uh, you can also use the history recall brush to go through and like get rid of any stitches you want or to, you can load in scan data and use history recall. Just again, control tap, you can go through and sculpt that detail in. How I ended up using it on the load tool um, patchy here is actually, you know what, I wanna save this as in case we want to go back to that. Uh, so on the body stitches here, we had different versions of this. So if I go in here to subtool, and again, we'll just do, and eh, we'll just hide all these things. I'm gonna shoot this down to the bottom. So uh, we have this version here. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this off. And let's say I go into UV map, and I go ahead and morph my UV, and then I wanna go through and paint another fabric pattern on this new one here. Let's go into solo mode. Uh, let's go into my textures here. Let's go ahead and load up a new fabric pattern. Uh, that's a cool one. Select it, scale it down, and uh, let's get this one tile. Yeah, of course it can. So what I was doing was doing. Um, kind of going through here and you can just paint your fabric pattern on all of these ones. Actually, be very careful about this because if you have Zia turned on, it, it will paint your, um, anything that's black, it'll kind of dig in, anything that's white, it'll bump out. Uh, so you can use that to your advantage. Uh, in this case, I didn't want to. So I have this version here and what we can do is we can use the history brush to grab any of this information onto my other patchy version. So I think if I hold down control, let's just tap that area here. And then on this one, we'll use a BH history recall. And then we can go through here, uh, RGB intensity up to 100. Uh, Z intensity we don't really need. I would just go through here. And again, if you go in here to your brush, auto masking, you can say because we have polygroups for each section, we can just be kind of sloppy and just kind of go through here. However, this is kind of, especially when you're projecting um, sculptural detail. So for instance, in this version here, if I turn that off temporarily and we go through here and it's like, okay, I want Zed. 
I want to pick up this de all of this detail here and all this detail here and any sort of detail here or we can isolate we can add you know what let's do this let's go down here to our surface noise let's go ahead and load in a surface noise from my the alphas cloth this is again from zbrushguides.com tileable alphas let's go ahead and grab this weave pattern here and we're going to turn off mix basic noise down to zero alpha scale we can kind of knock that back a little bit here and then make our strength color blend we can put to zero so uh, we can crank that strength up or down let's see what i'm looking for down okay Oops, go into edit, put it on a UV. There we go. So now we have uh, texture information we also want to transfer as well as polypane information. So I'm going to say uh, apply this to mesh. Okay, let that calculate here. And then we'll go back in here to our polypane. So we have texture and polypane information we want to transfer. I'm going to control tap this area now. And go back here to our BH history recall brush. And now when I'm recalling in this, uh, I'm getting my texture information. If you don't believe me, we can go in here to render and use this cool new fade opacity functionality. And then as we're going through, you're seeing we're picking up um, that brush detail. Now, it can be a little bit tricky because with the history recall, you got to be like, oh, I got to go in here and I don't want it to grab anything weird uh, or pull through the other side like it's doing over here. Um, so what we can do is instead of using history recall on a 3D object, or I mean, it's always gonna be a 3D object. You can do it on the flattened object. There we go. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn fade opacity back down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, UV map, we're gonna morph UV. Wait for it, this is pretty, heavy, pretty dense meshes. And then also on this one, we're gonna say morph UV. And then now that it's out like this, hold down control, and we're just going to uh, control tap this history, go back to our other one, and then now we can use the history recall brush. We don't have to worry about projecting stuff through the object or camera-based stuff because everything is flat. Everything's pointed right at you. So again, brush, history, recall, and then now you can go through here, you can grab um, that texture, that detail, uh, brush auto masking is up to 100 so I can I can be a little bit sloppy so we can go through here and we can paint these miscellaneous areas out with our new RGB and texture let's go ahead and do this one too so again you don't got to worry about it it's super fast uh, then when you're done with this you can say let's go ahead and unmorph these UVs and then we'll go back to this one you can leave these morphed if you want to but go ahead and knock that back and then we go here and then we turn our uh, render fade opacity back up. You're going to see transferred that detail, no problem, uh, just straight through, as well as made a much easier transition, uh, much easier way to get your poly paint um, back on there. So fade opacity back down. So. Uh, okay, so I did miss a couple questions in here. I did want to uh, talk about. So, uh, comma key, uh, mannequins. There's always been mannequins in here, and there's some dogs and some stuff in here. So, you can double click these mannequins, you can go through, and you can kind of pose these Z sphere creatures. And then also, there's a um, under Z spheres, there's some new creatures in here. I thought there was going to be this when it went on the, the version you get, there might, I think there will be more stuff. I think it's called Z Zoo. Or something like that but uh, look in there for any cool new mannequins you can use uh, there is another thing here let's just make this simple uh, I use this on patchy but just for demo purposes so we hit control D a couple times and then we go in here to brush uh, deco brush here you're gonna see uh, we have yeah 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 you can drag this out and then you have a curve on there and if you just tap this curve to update it it's going to take this uh, alpha and stretch it along there let's go ahead and drop that intensity down and you can um, 
you can update this thing on the fly. Let's hit Control D, and then we'll do another version of that. You can see next to it. So you can use this, and it doesn't have to be this alpha. You can swap out this alpha for this. So I was using this for some of my uh, wrinkle brushes. So you can kind of go through here, and you can use this to kind of add some really cool wrinkles. And you can tap off, and then drag another one here. And then uh, you can go to Z sub, and that'll kind of push it in. So very quickly, you can get some very nice fall off uh, on here. But of course, if you want to do a uh, very particular alpha, you can go through here, and you can do that. Or again, Z add makes it very, very uh, nice. Let's go ahead and drop that Z intensity down. And the other cool thing too is you can just go in here and change it on the fly. Uh, and it'll just kind of update. Um, hey, you know what? Let me open up my other notes. I got two versions of my notes. One that's just kind of titles and stuff, and then one where it goes into the more particulars for my um, see refresh things demo curve. Oh, you can also do it with um, Curve dodge or PP alpha drag dodge or PC. Okay, so this is repeating this alpha along the curve, so it's just one long uh, arrow. If you go in here to dot stroke, uh, it'll it'll keep repeating. So you can kind of go through here and you can keep dragging this out, as opposed to drag dot, where if you use it, you can just kind of drag this one arrow around. Go in here to dot stroke, and you can just get very nice. Um, smooth transition. So it's kind of like lazy mouse uh, extended. And you can also do this with texture. So if we go in here, let me grab in a rainbow texture. Texture, let's see if we need to rotate this. And turn on our RGB. Maybe, maybe not. Alpha off. Hmm, hmm. Deck on curve. Alpha texture. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'll have to investigate that. This is <laughs> this is one of those things where I'd make myself look at an editing. I uh, can't do that right now, but uh, I thought that it would work. Maybe. Oh, RGB needs to be turned on in your brush. Duh. Um. Yeah. See. See what I mean by uh, the power of editing. So you can go through here and you can do this, or you can do your drag dot. So drag dot here, and then. Uh, you can go through and just, or you can turn your alpha back on, and then, oops, now it's just going to be uh, where your brush stroke is. Let's go to Z sub. How cool is that? Pretty neat. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, yes, this is live, live. <laughs> Uh, how do I create it? What's the difference between export alpha and export processed alpha? Alpha, export, alpha, export processed alpha. Export processed alpha button specifies that the, oh, you can hit control to get more information, by the way, in the help stuff. As modified by the current settings, the alpha adjustment curve when pressed. Okay, so basically, if you want to export just your alpha, like you have your um, your arrow here and you go to alpha export, it's going to export it. If you go in here to your modify alpha adjust and you do any zany stuff um, with your alpha like this, then you want to go to export your processed alpha and then export it. And then you'll get your modified alpha, I think. Yes, like Brian says. Uh, how to create alpha map from to color map in ZBrush. So basically you would load in a, uh, kind of like we did when we did our rope. So you go in here, let's go into import our, actually let's try the rope texture with a deco brush. Let's see how that does. So um, demo rope, grab it, texture, rotate. And then if we want to make an alpha for this rope, just go in here to texture make alpha that'll make our alpha map actually let's go in here to reset that um, so there that is so now we got our rope stretch across an alpha let's change that to dot stroke and in fact let's go into our let's make this a little bit easier plain make poly mesh 3d and we can see a little bit better if we go into skin shader 4 maybe so here's our deco brush so earlier we did this uh, RGB subdivide, 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 subdivide. 
to be turned on. Texture, grab it. Alpha, grab it. Um, yeah, I guess you can just stretch this rope along here. Yeah, that's not going to work that well. So uh, anyway, we'll just do this with our regular brush here. So we have our standard brush here, and we have our rope alpha, and we have our rope small. And we can go through here, and we can go into stroke, modifiers, turn on roll. And then uh, under this alpha adjust, like we were talking about, we can go in here to our intensity, and we can crank that intensity up. So we're just getting the outline of that. And then we'll turn off Zia, turn on RGB, turn on poly paint here. So now we can go through and just drag this rope out. And, uh, but this is gonna have kind of that, it's gonna, wherever it's dark in my alpha, it's gonna be opaque, but I guess that's okay, actually. Yeah. So here we have our rope here, and now we can go, yee, how, and then you do a lasso, and then you put a little knot. And that's how you know I'm streaming from Austin, Texas right now. Cool. <laughs> cool. Are those titleable alphas included in ZBrush? Or you get them somewhere else. I got them from ZBrushGuides.com. Uh, most of my cloth sculpting I got from there. I wouldn't recommend any particular school classes and enroll for hearing ZBrush in a classroom environment. Not career-minded, just artistically interested. To be honest, I have the cash flow, just not great with online courses. Um, I mean, I teach at CG Master Academy. Um, Let me see if I can find that for you. So basically, uh, it's a six week course. We go through and we do uh, a lot. It's a pretty intense course, but um, you go through and it basically, you show up, uh, I have videos for you to watch. You go through and you do projects based on the assignment description. And then yeah, I give you uh, probably anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes of feedback per week on what you submit. And then we have a live QA on Monday nights where you just get to ask me questions and I go for about an hour, just kind of going through anything that came up or anything that uh, any live QA people ask on the forums. So that's kind of classroomy, uh, but you know, it's ZBrush-ish. Uh, it's not really like, it's not that artistic, honestly. Uh, I don't get too heavy into like uh, design aesthetics. It's not really, it's more about uh, expanding your mind with concepting in ZBrush and getting something tangible in the round. And then if you want to go deeper into like production stuff, uh, there's classes for that. That's going to be like, here's how you do the perfect topology for animation and rendering and texturing of face with XYZ. And then if you want to go the aesthetic side, here's character design fundamentals or here's environment design fundamentals. I'm just kind of a, uh, I'm not part of any course. I'm kind of off to the side as part of a supplementary class. It's just basically like, here's how you can concept in ZBrush and here's all the cool stuff you can do in ZBrush. And uh, you kind of just throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks as far as, you know, I don't, I don't want to limit it. I don't want to be like, hey, we're going to, this is a ZBrush for concept and iteration weapons or characters. It's like, you can make whatever you want. That's the whole point. You can make a starship, you can make a plant. You can make a weapon, you can make character, you can make, uh, you can do it stylized, you can do a hyper reel. I kind of leave it up to you. Um, yeah, that is online. I did used to teach at Gemini uh, school here in Austin, Texas, but uh, when I got laterally promoted into management, I had to kind of stop doing that. Cool. <laughs> yes, Brian. Uh, no, thank you for your help, Brian. You, uh, I like when people can go through here and start answering questions uh, in the chat. And if I miss any questions, I apologize in advance. Um, just keep shouting them out. So we had, we went through Frankenstein. Oh, here's another one we can talk about. So if you have scan data. Now for me, I mean, look how beautiful this scan is. If you want more information on this uh, photogrammetry type stuff, I do have a photogrammetry playlist. You can go through there. And um, this is actually just taken with my old Samsung phone. So you can go through here and you just basically take your camera phone and walk around an object for a little bit and process it for a minute. And uh, you can swap it in and out and get your textures and stuff. Um, but sometimes, uh, if you're not as good as me, I'm just kidding, I, I, I can get terrible results. This one actually came out pretty good. And that's why I use it for demos. But let's say you're in trim dynamic and uh, it's like, you know what? Uh, I had a little scan error here and a scan error here and it didn't quite pick up um, and maybe, yeah, we'll leave that alone. 
so uh, you can use your brush extractor for this type of thing too. Now this is going to be very important when we were doing our resolution. So underneath our alpha, um, you know, this is fairly high resolution. So we want to go through here and make sure that under your from brush, your alpha width is relatively high. So I'm going to keep it at 512 here. So again, BXT for extract brush, we're picking up height and RGB information. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make it about yay big. And we're just going to steal from this side. And again, because we remember that's the exits out of what you've captured, it'll blur at the end. So it kind of transitions nicely. Um, but now we can go through here and we can say ring, ta da. And then uh, same thing for down here. You can go through and you can just grab that. But that's a good start for kind of doing a little bit of. Um, what would that be called? Um, all right, my brain's starting to go. Photogrammetry, scan data, cleanup. <laughs> so I guess uh, let's just do this too. Uh, BXT, and we can put this, oops, G, and we can borrow it from here. GB information. In fact, on that side, I need to turn it off uh, completely. Uh, and that'll get rid of that. But sometimes on scan data, it's nice to have that just a little bit of that breakup. Um, and maybe even in some of this, let's go back to our alpha width, let's say 256. Maybe I go a little bit faster. And let's grab some dirt. Wait. BXT. G dirt. There it is. So like in some of here uh, where the camera couldn't quite get in there, I can go through here and I can just start adding in a little bit of dirt where I assume that it probably needs to be fairly quickly. I probably should have captured some of that dirt in there, but you guys get the idea. Um, let's see here, I guess the right question is, is there something that you haven't explored yet or uh, done a video on? Yes, there's so many things I'd I'd want to get into. I want to get heavier into Unreal, uh, Houdini, and I can do a deeper dive in ZBrush too. I mean, I know what I know in ZBrush and doing the what's new in ZBrush kind of keeps me honest, but at the end of the day, I don't really know that much. I only know what I use a lot. I've probably forgotten more ZBrush than I know at this point. Um, but yeah, I think we're Commander Head, Frankenstein, Girl Statue, Apache Final. Yeah, I think we've covered everything. Like uh, there might be some like little stuff. Here's here's what's going to happen though is that I've shown you the basics and kind of what you can use it for. Um, but keep your eyes peeled for like I said before people using this for just crazy purposes that I didn't even think, uh, that I wouldn't have even thought about. Uh, let's go down here and let's grab a metal for this. Let's do maybe shiny. Let's drop that in RGB down a little bit. MRGB color fill object. And then we'll do a toy plastic. Let's hit D for dynamic on that one. And then again, MRGB color, fill object, RGB. So anyway, hope you guys had fun. Let's turn off our texture here. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up calling it a day. But uh, but yeah, so get in there, check out the new stuff. See, keep your eyes peeled on the forums and stuff for, let's go into perspective here. Get our light. Um, see what kind of cool stuff people are doing. And because uh, I, I guarantee you they're going to be using this stuff for things I'm, I'm definitely not thinking of right now. So, all right, cool, everybody. I'll let you guys go and uh, have a good rest of your day. And uh, usually I stream Tuesdays, first Tuesday of the month on Pixelogic's channel and then the first Thursday of the month on my channel. I might stream this Thursday if you guys want to talk about you know, my NVRay stuff that I did for the patchy stuff. Um, 
Ugh, we'll see how that goes. But cool. Thanks, everybody.